brief reminder so we don't have to address what took place yesterday. Please silence your phones or turn them off at this time. Also, do not engage in any behaviors that will be distracting to the jurors. Do the parties have anything to raise this morning? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. <laughs> All right. Is Agent Sanford in the lobby? Yes, sir. Please bring him in and <coughs> take a seat. taken of the jurors out of abundance of caution if you can aim your lens away from the jury box that will probably take care of any concerns about that please bring them in
Everyone can be seated. Good morning, members of the jury. We are going to continue at this time with the examination of Agent Sanford by the state. Ms. Kappelman, you may continue when you're ready. Okay, so where we left off was the Dolce Vita recording. Um, there was several examples given in that recording by the defendant about rental cars. Why was that significant to the case? Um, it's significant because uh, Luis, Luis Rivera and Sigfredo Garcia rented two cars to come up here on two separate occasions and to um, come up here and commit the murder. And were those facts publicly released at the time that the Dolce Vita recording was made? No, they were not. Okay, so the fact that a Prius was the suspect vehicle in this case was not out? That was out. The fact that they had rented a car um, was not out publicly, but there was, uh, it was released that we were looking for a green Prius as the suspect vehicle. All right, and <clears throat> in particular, have you reviewed any text messages to show that this defendant was aware that we were looking for a Prius. Yes, that's correct. Okay, so he received some information to that effect at some point? That's correct, he did. All right, was that information received prior to the Dolce Vita recording? Yes, it was. All right, was there <coughs> any mention in the Dolce Vita recording? There was a lot of talk about blackmailing, but any in the context of Catherine McBanawa being the blackmailer or having been the blackmailer over the past two years? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Does he say, you're a blackmailer, you're an extorter? No, he does not. This is just like <coughs> what you've been doing to me. Right, he did not. All right, let's go to demo B, please. Judge, I'd ask to publish demo B at this point. You may. So if you could kind of walk us through how what we've heard so far on the wire demonstrates the structure of the conspiracy. Um, so it began with um, our undercover bumping into um, Donna Adelson, provided her with the, uh, the article with the amount of $5,000 and a phone number on it. <clears throat> then Donna Adelson immediately calls Charlie Adelson, tells him it's an ex-girlfriend. Uh, Charlie Adelson then calls Catherine McManwa. Okay. Then he goes and meets with Catherine. All right. And does it ever <clears throat> skip over Mr. Adelson? Does Donna ever call Catherine McManwa or the other way around? Never. Judge, at this time I'd ask to publish uh, call F on our exhibit. You can proceed. Uh, 
deep in the lobster pocky. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so here Mr. Adelson indicates he just had coffee with a friend. Who is the friend? Catherine Magbanawa. Does he say the name Catherine Magbanawa or Katie to his mother in this no. call? No, he doesn't. In fact, does he say the name Katie to his mother ever on the wire in all these calls we're going to hear? No, I don't believe so. He says he gave some relationship advice. Did you hear any relationship advice being given on the Dolce Vita recording? I didn't. All right. He tells her everything is fine. Did you hear on the Dolce Vita recording Mr. Adelson threatening to possibly kill somebody else? I did. Publish G, please. Before you start it, we're still on uh, April 20th, right? Oh, I guess we all have the sheet. But April 20th, G, do you have your sheet? I do not. Okay, I'll get you one. That was the exhibit, I believe. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> April 20th? Correct. Same day as the Dolce Vita? Recording, correct. Day after the bump? Correct. Day okay. after. All right. Publish G, please. <clears throat> yeah. I had a story about that. I had to schedule one, schedule it for my business. Um, yeah, so, so there's the, uh, I hung out with my friend and then going to sleep on some stuff and then she's going to come uh, tomorrow either my office or a fan's office and she's coming out. How no, she, yeah, she yeah. has that. Okay. So, so uh, I'll, talk, I'll talk to her tomorrow. I wish her the best of luck. Yeah. Anyway. So, do you think she'll be okay? Yeah, yeah. I told her, I mean, like, I can play it for you. Yeah. 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 So, you want to Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because, uh, 
I like to, I like him to have a good night's sleep. So, yeah, it works so well. I won't get any kind of sleep in the But I'm totally not worried about it. I just said, I'm just going to put a girl on that. go to the next day call H when is that call made it's on a 421 at 817 a.m. all right could we hear call H please Thank you. 
I'm going to tell you something right now, and I'm going to make this very clear. I'm going to make something very clear because you're talking belligerent bullshit. I'm going I'm to make something very clear, okay? And I'm drunk. You haven't spoken to me about anything, and now you're going to come at me? Why? Because you don't know how to apologize because you were wrong, okay? This is the same thing that happened last time. Listen, I have a more pressing matter that I have to attend to, okay? Okay. on this phone call. That's Sigfredo Garcia, also known as Tudo. All right. Doesn't sound like everything is going too fine on that end, huh? No, not at all. All right. Play call I, please. Huh? 
you're thinking of mastery, so you'll find out when you get it. The amount that I gave you on a piece of paper. I don't know if it's $60.75 or $65.70. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I can use in his pool. So it makes no sense. <coughs> Got it? Okay, so what's the significance of $65.70? 65.70 is the last four digits of the undercover's telephone number that was on the piece of paper that was given to Donna Adelson. All right, so if Catherine McVanawa is using code to convey that number to Garcia, he's not getting it, at he least does, at first, right? At first he does not get it. He thinks she's talking about a real number till the end of the call. All right, and the code that she's using is... I need $65.70 for something to do with the kids' school, right? That, that's correct. Okay, and he, as we mentioned, doesn't get the code, so he's thinking she's really asking for that. Correct. Does he appear to have $65.70 for the kids' school? Uh, apparently not. And the 6570, that phone number, that was on the piece of paper that was handed to Donna, correct? Correct. And now... Garcia's got it, yes? Correct. And how did that change hands? Uh, apparently, that night after Charlie met with Katie at the restaurant, she must have gone home and talked to, because they lived together, so she went home and talked to Sigfredo at home. Okay, but on the wire, we don't have to guess, because we've got, we're handing it to Donna, right? <laughs> Correct. We know Charlie's got it after that right because we hear him on dolce giving it to katie correct he gives it to katie at the restaurant. and we hear katie at least on this call giving it to garcia yes correct okay all right let's go to the next call please call jay Security 
you know, when you start to ask for security or there's a lot more into it. So I'm trying to do the research for that. Find out because usually when these properties come up, I mean, they can make out with everybody. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I don't think that's the case. Just I feel like there's, um, that it was posted incorrectly. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, I mean, you know, some people buy it, some people don't. Yeah. So, it's like, you know, you go out of in there and you'll see who buy it. Petition. Yeah. You throw the chums out, and yeah, they're all going to go out. Okay, you throw the chum and a bunch of fish come and they're going to jump on it. I mean, I, I kind of think that... Yeah, but for the pricing, it's for the way to So... Yeah, I think for the way. Way, way too high for pricing, right? Yeah, of course, that's crazy. Like, who pays that much? Yeah. I mean, no. if they really want to get something, like, they would, they would, they would afford it, they would afford it, you know? Yeah, hang on, hang on one second, Danny, and that's me, but I can't get, sorry about this, really important call. What's up?
So let me find out first um, regarding the property and then we'll go from there. To be, to be very honest with you, I'm not very interested in buying the property. I think I think you buy a property like that, it becomes, this is the thing. You buy a property like that, it's like that it's like what you're talking about, mm -hmm. it becomes a headache for life. Because yeah, stuff, but then it's like, then you don't yeah. want to get stuck either in a situation where it's like, it's a false advertisement. Oh yeah, and then it can be it can be listen, it can be one of two things. This is what happens when stuff doesn't hit the MLS folks, okay? mm -hmm. and it's called like a pocket listing, meaning that someone's able to list the real estate beforehand. But mm -hmm. what ends up happening is, is that okay, then you get that property, it's a great deal and everything. It becomes a, if you get the wrong people in there, it becomes a problem for life. I've had this with other properties. Mm -hmm. okay? It becomes. Lots of excuses, and then they move in, and then next thing you know, let's say you because they had it, then at the same time, somebody's kind of keep increasing the amount, exactly. And then what happens is they tell you, I want to pay this for the rental property, or I want to pay that for the rental property. And you're but like, but how that's not the case, that's the problem. If that's not the case for, for the client, then you know, some, that's what I'm saying, there's always false leads. Yeah, yeah. It's one of that, that, like, oh, that's probably good. I don't know, well, no, okay, I don't really need it. And it's like, you can always let go for nothing. Well, I, I think, I think it's one of the, without a question, it's one of the things, you know, false leads, don't just waste your fucking time. Mm -hmm. Or, you get the wrong tenant in there, with your rental property, and it goes ahead and it becomes, you know, let's say even they move out, let's say they take a little vacation. Next thing you know, so if you don't know, you're not at the property all the time. Of course. And, and their little cousin, while they're on vacation, is like, it, it moves in and it's like, hey, guess who I am? You can da 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 da. And then next thing you know, his friend shows up and says, hey, guess who I am? I need this. And then they, they're constantly breaking things and they're constantly not, you know, not that you're going to fix things. And it, it becomes a, it will stand forever. They will that it'll be like a, a leech that never leaves you. Well, hopefully that's not that's not the case. That's why I need to get everything clarified first. That's why I, I do all the background checks and everything, make sure like a person really sees those wanted before I even go forth of you know, trying to look for problems for them. Or else I'm just I'm going around and around and nothing. I mean that's honestly that's why I do things also about the contract. Gonna have a contract attorney look over, and then you buy them, and then after the property is bought, the property is bought. Mm -hmm. There is no like, oh, by the way, um, I know I, I know I agreed to pay you X, but I'm going to come to the closing and I'll give you half. No, if you say you're going to do something, you fucking do it. Mm -hmm. You know, if you say you're going to pay rent, you pay rent. If you say I'm going to buy this building for fifty thousand dollars whatever, or a million dollars, or let's say you're going to buy a building for $10 million, okay? Mm -hmm. You're buying a building for $10 million, you don't show up at close and go, hey, I, I decided I'm going to give you one million. Yeah. And that's it. Like, you know, you just get an old, you I mean, don't want to do it. I mean, if you need to go for a house like last night, to find out um, if, uh, if this was a good deal, and then I'll find out more. Because like I said, I don't want to be able to take advantage of it, especially when you're over here. So. Well, you gotta, you gotta look at the pocket list. It's good that you're in real estate, but just, just be careful. Because I'm telling you, if you, if you buy the wrong rental property, like the one that I had in Fairmore, mm -hmm. these, these people are a bunch of fuckers, pain in the ass. They got nothing but excuses. It's, Excuses. They fuck you over every chance they get. Um, by the way, did I tell you I had to take everybody out of their more property? Everybody but that little guy Leonard. Oh, you don't want to say? That 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 uh Dermore property. Nugget. Yeah, that guy Leonard. Yeah, that guy Leonard. 
Yeah, but the competition out there is like competition is fierce. I mean, mm -hmm. you want to, I mean, you're hot with health. You're also bilingual with health. Um, but you got to hustle. But you also make the right connections, you know the right people. Exactly. I mean, I think you come in. Bang. <laughs> That's the truth. I do. I have to make phone calls, especially people that I know that like to worry, you know, to be out. I do always do the topic, especially when they mean, like, I have one of these six fighters, and I swear, I'm reaching out one of these phones, and I said, this is going to be a good thing for me to coach you something. I said, these people are investors. Well, look at, uh, look around. And like I said, I mean, if you need someone to lend you money to help you out. I don't mind helping out. Oh, no. uh, I mean, obviously, there's a limit, but I it doesn't help me out. But, uh, I might, hey, am I, I want to see you at some point. I need to slam today. Mm -hmm. But I can, I can get you that good little bonsai tree if you want. Oh, okay. That'd be good next <clears throat> All right, so in this call, could we publish demo A, please? <clears throat> oh, it is. Okay. okay, we better do it. <laughs> At the beginning portion that we listened to, there's a discussion about a trip. Is she asking him to buy her a trip or is he offering to buy her a trip? It appears that he was offering to buy her a trip. All right, and what does she say about that? It doesn't have to be a quote, but. She basically says that's not what she was talking about. That, she that, it's, that it's not a good idea, uh, not a good investment. Right, not a good investment. Some, someone told her it wasn't a good investment to do Correct. that. So maybe not a great time for him to be buying her anything. Correct. Okay. Um, she says that he is going to look into a couple properties. Does she ever say the name Sigfredo Garcia to Charlie Adelson? Judge, objection the meeting in the sidebar, please. Approach. <clears throat>
overruled. You may continue. Was the name Sigfredo Garcia said by Catherine Magdanawa? No. And did Catherine Magdanawa on the wire talk to anyone else about the situation other than this defendant and Sigfredo Garcia? No, she didn't. All right. When she talks about... Oh, I wanted to ask you about the lending money to buy a house. Does Catherine Magbanawa demand money to assist her in buying a house, or does Charlie Adelson offer the money? Charlie offered her the money. <clears throat> We've heard testimony, which is depicted in this demonstrative exhibit, that the tenant was code for blackmailer. In this call, if tenant is code for blackmailer, which one of the parties is explaining the potential problems with paying a blackmailer? It's Charlie Adelson. And he's explaining to her that the blackmailer may continue to come back or multiply or raise the rent as it were? That's correct. Okay, let's move on to the next call, please. Call K. Sorry, Her birthday today, teacher. She was taking her to the gym just for dinner. 
straight into call L next. meeting occur at Matt Surrey restaurant? Yes, it did. Who was present at the meeting? <clears throat> Charlie Adelson and uh, Harvey Adelson. And was that the meeting that was at least attempted to be intercepted by Special Agent Kendall? Yes, it was. At the sushi bar? It was, and also outside, too. Okay. And did um, some of the conversation at the sushi bar get captured on Agent Kendall's recording device? It did. And was that um, audio, the audio portion of that, clarified by the expert that we heard from yesterday, McElveen? Yes. And did you compile a, or review this thumb drive, States Exhibit 114, that contains the video as well as the enhanced audio that McElveen worked on? Yes, I did. All right, Judge, at this time, I'd ask to introduce States 114 into evidence. Any objection? Just our previous objection, Your Honor. And may I have one moment, Ms. Cowell? Go ahead. One fourteen will be admitted. No worthy prior objection. Thank you, Your Honor. Permission to publish? You may. Okay, this will take us just a moment to switch gears here. Could you start it over? Start it over. Yeah, all day long. Could you start it over? Because I appreciate you adjusting the volume, but let's just try again. Yeah. 
pay all day long. I can even tell you the value of dating. Yeah, all day long. In terms of an up undercover operation, what does the term mean to get made? To get made um, means that they figure out that the undercover is a police officer. After the clip that we just watched, is there any more relevant discussion to our investigation during their meal? No. All right, and then on our sheet, we've got the next event, I think being the bump letter. Can you explain what that is? Um, we decided uh, nobody was calling the number, nobody was calling the undercover, so we decided to send a letter to the um, Adelson residents purporting to be from the, uh, from the extortion person, the undercover agent. And chronologically, is this when the letter would have been sent or mailed? Yes, on the, on the sheet. I'm sorry, on the 23rd, yes. Okay. I'll show you what I've marked as State 79. Recognize it? Yes. What is it? This is the letter that was mailed to the Adelson uh, residents. All right, the icon? The icon. Judge, at this time I'd ask to introduce State 79. Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. State 79 is admitted. 
we publish that one? Correct. My phone is not ringing, so you don't care about Tato and what he did for you. He knows he is fucked, and so soon, so will you. skip ahead to April 25th and draw your attention to call M. Up to this point, call M. Has anyone called the undercover number yet? No. All right, publish call M, please. <coughs> It took us, takes a second to That's pause. fine. Thank you. You're good. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Hey, you on your way? Yeah. Okay, Very cool. Good. I'm going to be at the icon, which is when you come over to 395. It's right there in the, uh, you know, which is building the icon is, right? It's all the way in South Beach, right? Like, yeah. Like, when, you, when you come over. Uh, like, it's a lot of graphics down there. You can go a little bit more north, or just go north anyway. I will. I'm, just, I will. I'm, just, I'm standing outside. I was talking to my parents about it. Huh? I just talked to my parents about my day. I'm standing, I'm standing up. No, I was talking to my parents about my day. Oh, okay. Well, I so that's just like I had to just like jet out of my home yeah. house. Like, I mean, like, you know, where, you can't worry about me every single two seconds. So. Of course, where, but I'd rather, where are you now? I'm on this thing. All right, just, just give me this one there, just come down here. Okay, is everything okay? Yeah, I just want you to, to come down here so I can see it. We're already in the car. It's, it's on the, the icon is on the corner of the 5th and Alton. It's that, it's that big building where you, as soon as you're on Alton and you cross over 5th on your right hand side. Okay, can it be anywhere else besides that? I can get my car and start trying to find you, but then we gotta drive the car. I'd rather you just come over here. I know, but that is like the heart of South Beach, like. That's stupid for me to go all the way down there. You're on. Okay. I'll, I'll, start, I'll get my car in five I'll get in five minutes. I'll start heading this way, and I'll get my car, and then I'll, and then I'll meet you somewhere in like 15 minutes. I, I still need to talk to my parents for another five minutes, and then I'm going to leave there, and then I'm going to come find you, come to wherever you are. But just start, still keep yeah, heading I'm south. I'm heading south. I'm going to be south. What's the cross street? Alright, 80 seconds? Yeah, I get in. Um, if you recall, then you get in the car. Okay, I'll give you a call if you recall, and I'll start heading over. Do you get it when I call you through WhatsApp? Uh, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I'll, I'll put my ring on, I don't know, let me see if my phone is on vibrate. Okay. Is it my shirt? Okay. Alright, so it sounds like. Oh, sorry. I'm oh, sorry, start again. I will. <laughs> Sounds like they're planning a meeting. Was a, did a meeting occur after this phone call? Yes. 
And was that a meeting that you were able to record through some means with undercover agents? No. Why not? Because we didn't know about the meeting until this phone call happened, and we realized they were already on the way, and we couldn't get down there in time. Okay. And did, didn't know the location. It's Correct. a moving target, right? Correct. Okay. All right. I think we can skip in. You want to say anything, Chuck? I want to go to the next day, April 26, 2016, and play call O, please. Of course, it's too much on the fly. You got more than you got to be in your chair, thank you. Okay. Is the next item we have on here a text message? Yes, correct. And how is it you're able to get text messaging on the wire? Um, from the wire, we also get not only audio calls, but we also get text messages if they're sent through regular text messaging through the All carrier. Right. What if it's sent through WhatsApp or some other type of application? We do not get that. All right. So this next text was sent through regular iPhone message? Um, I believe it was regular text message. I text believe. message. Okay. Could we look at P, please? It's okay. Don't worry about signing in. Okay. Great. All right. So this is from who to who? From who to whom? From whom to who? It's from, it's <laughs> I'll from, get emails about that. <laughs> it's from Catherine McManwa to Sigfredo Garcia. Okay. <clears throat> All right. And then Q, please. Does he say who the homie is? This is from Sigfredo, and he, he does not say who the homie is. All right, I'm going to go to call R next. Publish call R, please. Yeah, it, it makes sense. A thousand, I mean, it makes a thousand percent sense. 
So the discussion of you don't care was that language that was used in the the letter that was sent to the Adelsons? It was. All right, on to call S, please. Okay. You know, I mean, it's, 
you know, I mean, just saying, like, you, okay. you, wanted, yeah. you could use a lawyer about everything. I mean, there's, there's, you didn't do anything wrong. You didn't do anything to anybody. Somebody is fishing. Let them fish. They, they know, too, that you don't, you don't have nothing to do with anything. So it's not like, you know, it's like me going to the, to my next door neighbor and saying, hey, I know, you, I know you're, you know, whatever. Like, okay, they, they look at me like I have three heads. You know, I mean, that's pretty much the, you know, pretty much the impression that, and that's the appropriate impression, because someone talks to you about something you don't know what they're talking about, you, you go, I don't know what you're talking about. So, so somebody asks someone to talk to you, and you tell them they don't know what they're talking about, and like, basically you get lost. And that's the truth. You don't know, you don't know what you don't know. You don't know something, you don't know something like this. There's not much you can do to help that person out, unfortunately. But it's, it's not like you do know that person, and you're not helping them. If you don't know somebody, you don't know somebody. So, you know, it's like someone coming and talking to me about someone who I don't know. I just said, here, I don't, don't know who you're talking about, and I don't know. Sorry. Like, I mean, so I'm just saying, but you, you, know, you get worked up. It's not, it's not done like that. I know it's not all worked off and all fucking crazy, and it's, it's, that has to stop. I mean, I really don't want to, you know. Okay. Well, I just have to talk to you, didn't I? Yeah. But I mean, wasn't that important that I contact you? No, I know that you were like, you know, that's not going to work. Well, he, he said he was, but as you spoke last night, we never, 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 that was the process. Oh, you figure you get yourselves all worked on. I know, I know, I know. And it's always, I'm just saying, it's always, you're getting a little better in time, but I'm just saying, it's always, you know, all worked up. I'm trying, trying. I know what, I know what it's like. I know, but I'm, I mean, maybe. You understand what you're saying. Totally. Yeah. And you don't realize, I mean, like, you probably watch too many movies. Probably. Oh, it's, it's not like, oh, like, yeah, we'll, we'll get one of them and then the other one will be stuck paying. Like, mm-hmm. the stupidest thing I've ever heard, it doesn't work like that. Okay. Mm-hmm. You told me all this history, I know. And I just said, and, and I got it. I got it. And so, it was a better day. It's just a day. Well, that's great, but I'm just saying, it's not like, you know, there's nothing there, there's nothing, um, no, I mean, there really, there really is, I mean, listen, someone, someone wants to bother his nonsense of threats, I mean, it's, it's not, a, it's not uncommon, um, and it's, when you get nonsense of threats, I mean, first of all, they don't, they don't give you a number, I mean, everything is so traceable, it doesn't, in a billion years, I mean, especially in electronics, is, is extremely traceable. The other thing is this, is that I'll let you on a secret. People, if someone doesn't want you to know what they look like, they wear a hat, they wear glasses, they, they put on a beard, right. they, you know, they, 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 they look at for five dollars at the costume store, you can buy anybody on one beard. You, you put that on. Yeah. And you wear glasses and a hat like everybody else on South Beach because it's really funny outside. So if someone yeah. would come over, wearing a hat and glasses and talk to So you, you can't see the corners of their face. And they walk around with a big fluffy hat and glasses and come by. Like, no. That's not how it's That is not how it's done. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No, no, no. Don't have a moment It's either a complete, it's either a complete nonsense, which it is. But if somebody asks someone, can you go there and tell them something? And that, that's like the guy was that's basically what he did. You know, all right, I'll go there and I'll tell him something. Right? And that's why you do something is done like that. And otherwise, it's mm-hmm. not you. You know, listen, you didn't do anything. You didn't do anything to anybody. You didn't do anything to go to people are. They're not going to go through the, the amount of planning and threats and all the other things that you have to do. And risk. Because something's going to always happen. I mean, like, even the best way plan. Um, I mean, even the best way you plan, you could have, you know, there could be an off-duty officer taking his dog for a walk. He just, right. just happened to come around the corner, just happened, something happens to happen. You know, or 
somebody goes to do something, you actually get a turn, they tag their name. You know, they're laying on the floor with a torn ACL. Like, each, there's a lot of risk when somebody does something. There's no near one thing. So, to do that, what's the reason? There is a reason. And that's why there is, is nothing that, you know, like, you know, it's nothing that you have to worry about. It is, it is being looked into. Yeah, that's all I want to do. Yeah, I mean, but it's not, it's not like, you know, it trust me. I mean, you got, you know, you'll, you'll probably get a heart attack from, from things before, before that happens to you. So, I mean, if you're saying like, and that, that's probably more likely. Okay. So, I'm just, just letting you know, but I can't like, no, I don't want you to know anything, but I don't believe it. I don't want you to. I won't. Um, I'll only let you know if it's something very important that you need to tell you. I know, but I'm just saying it's... And I thought, I thought that was important enough that I needed to stick with you. Yes, I spent my whole fucking night down there. And I, I oh, believe me, I know, I know. You know, I mean, um, I'm just... I don't, I want you to go home and have some peace tonight, so please just... Okay, no, I was really planning on going down there and talking to you again. I'm just saying, like... Utter nonsense. Okay. And, with, and I can tell you this: great, think about it, great. When, when the first thing somebody says is "you don't care," that is a girl's fight. Yeah, I didn't even honestly. Care. I didn't even remember what and it was. The first thing is that is you don't really? care. Okay. You obviously do not care about something. That that means that that the girl is fighting. That's it. Okay. People don't write letters. Right? People don't write letters. People don't show their faces. People don't give you cell phone numbers. Like it's not done like that. It's it's somebody just messing around. Yeah. Fishing. Fishing. I got you. I mean, I'm just saying. Like, you have to understand. If if somebody was going to do something, nobody would show their face. Nobody would give you a cell phone number. Nobody would write something and put it in the mail. There's. See you know what I'm saying? There's. Yeah. Each one, each one of those is a huge mistake into itself. Yeah. If somebody does something, you'll get someone gives you a visit, you won't be able to identify their face, and you'll be given 40 hours. Yeah. That's the news. Yeah. Not someone, but not hiding out in the open. That's not a million years of time. Next, I'd like to play Call T, please. Let me, let me see if I, I can get the number. I got the number at home. 
in my guess. Okay. But let me see if the number may be some other place, okay? Okay. All right, I'll, I'll call you right. Call you, please. This one's going to be you. W, please.
Was the number being relayed in this call we just heard the correct number for the undercover? Yes, it was. As of this point, has anybody called the undercover yet? No, still have not called them. All right, let's go to the next day, April 27th, 2016, and publish call X, please.
like a lot of tension or an aggressive relationship between these two on this call? No, not at all. The gift card that could be used at any hotel, was Ms. Magbanawa demanding that from Mr. Adelson or was he volunteering it? No, he volunteered it. And did it, when he says mama needs a vacation with daddy, is there any evidence that in, indicates that Mr. Adelson was planning to go on this trip with Catherine Magbanawa? No. What was the status of their relationships at this point, if you know? Um, they were not dating anymore. They were just friends because she was currently living with Sigfredo Garcia. Publish call Y, please. Actually, I think we can skip Y. Let's go to the next day, April 28, 2016. Do we have another bump on that day? Yes, we do. Could you tell us about that one, please? Um, still no one had called the undercover back, called them at all. So we had the undercover agent um, call the Adelson Institute and ask for Donna Adelson. All right. Judge, that call is contained on State's Exhibit 107, which is in evidence. Permission to publish that call at this time? You may. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you for calling my Adelson's office. Is there anything you can do with you? Yes, good morning. Uh, may I speak to Donna, Mrs. Donna Addison? May I let her know who's calling? Sammy. Sammy from... Oh, I met her last week, uh, and I gave her some paperwork. Okay, thank you. Is there anything you can do with you? Yes, I'm Donna Addison. Oh, she knows what it's about. It's important paperwork. Oh, okay. Um, and your, your name is Sammy? Yes. Do you have another phone number you can be reached? My number is 305 712 6570. Okay, because she's not available right now, but I can help her maybe give you a call back. Okay, uh, just tell her it's very important. We need to find out immediately what she thinks about the paperwork. Okay. I'm certainly. Uh, I'm, I'm at the last week. Yes, thank you so much. All right. Have a good day. All right. You too. 
Right, if you'll switch back to the other exhibit, we could publish call Z next. Hey, how are you? Hey, um, are you in an office or home? No, 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 I'm driving to an office now. What's up? Well, um, Dorothy called me this morning and <clears throat> this guy was on the road. The office where Erica called me and she said, she said, it's normally bother you with this. She said, I have to bad call a lot, but somebody called this morning and he, he said his name was Sammy. And he gave you some very important papers last week and he hasn't heard from you. And we want you to call him back and hear from him. So. Okay. So I you know, want to verify the number. You know, the same, the correct number that I just <coughs> told you. <coughs> so obviously I'm not going to call the number. I was just going to be just the sales call. Just hit star 67 before you call the number and then they won't know the number you're calling from. Oh, okay, I'll write that there. What's your suggestion? Um, the, the odd thing is this, is that that's the same number you gave me, right? I, I don't know, because I gave you the number. I never kept it. You, you kept it. Tell me what the number was. Uh, 305 right. 712 right. Mm-hmm. No, it's, it's someone, it's, the odd thing is, is that it doesn't fall to the Yes, yeah, that's the same number, and it was called, and no one picked up. Maybe that's a good thing. Okay, so someone called today? They called the office, and Erica called me. She said, I hope I'm not bothering this copy of sales call. Yeah, no, I mean, mm-hmm. it, that, let me tell you something. I'm, I'm looking into it right now. Yeah, I think it should work. And I just wanted to verify the I know. And that's the odd thing is that the number will be picked up. I mean, yeah. I'll pick it up. So let me do this. Let me do this. Let me call somebody. Yeah. And but I, would, I wouldn't want to cross her when I tried it. I wouldn't worry at all. Okay. 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 And I'll tell you why. Especially, um, especially because. What happens immediately after this phone call? Um, I believe he calls Catherine McManwell, if I'm not mistaken. All right. I'm sorry, a lady calls? I believe he calls Catherine McManwell, if I'm not mistaken. All right, and does that call go to voicemail? Yes. Okay. And was a voicemail message left? I don't believe it was. Okay, and then did he call back and call AA? That's correct. All right, and that one goes to voicemail as well? Correct. Okay, publish AA, please. Sure. So we've got 
two calls to Catherine McBanawa, one where he leaves a voice me message. Are there two more unanswered calls sort of in rapid succession with that? Yes. All right, and then we go to BB, is that right? That's correct, I believe. Is this where she returns the call? Yes, she returns the call. To okay, publish BB, please. Ready for a morning break is a good time for me. Just let me know. Members of the jury, well, before you publish, members of the jury, does anyone need a break? Please raise your hands. Very well, we'll take it now. We'll have a 10 minute break. I need.
Please bring in the jurors.
Everyone can be seated. You may continue with publishing the next call. Thank you, Judge. The next call is BB. Okay. And, and a fucking 
to me, I ain't even talking to your shit about all these fucking cold shit, whatever shit anymore. Okay. I'm pissed the fuck off. Like, I'm gonna fucking go to the house right now. Okay, so either you go to the house or we go to the house. Exactly. We'll find out. 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 We'll 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 out. we will out 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 we
Somebody call the undercover next. Yes. All right. Who calls the undercover? Uh, Charlie Adelson does. All right. Let's call FF. Could we publish that one? <coughs> All to tell the jury whether the defendant hit star 67 I guess you can hit that before dialing the number to camouflage your own number yes I believe he did okay and that was somehow reflected on the wire on the wire yes it has dialed digits all right and after this call was made do we have three unanswered calls from the defendant to Catherine Magbanoa that sounds right all right and is he the first is she is she the first person he calls after he hangs up with the undercover? Yes. All right, 
at some point does she call back? Yes, she does. Okay, I'm publishing call GG. Yep. And he, he left it. Where Can you bring a long time? 
I want to say it was like on the 7th or 8th floor, and then it takes off. And he left it. a long time. Yeah, yeah, no, I was almost like, uh, like, I was almost like, uh, and he was asking me, like, who, you know, who is it? He was, he was, listen, I need that paper to say, who are you? And he's going to worry about it. And you know, trying to figure, trying to find out what's going on. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they, this person is on the assumption that I'm helping. Is there a friend in Broward, or is there a brother from Broward? He, he said he was just, he said he was this guy, some of this guy who's been out like a while, incarcerated, his brother. And he's saying that he has not been paid, and his family has not been taken care of, and this is not going away. And like, I mean, I, I'm not, I don't help. I just give charity out. You can't be like you're like thirteen people threatening you and mentioning no. names. And, you know what I mean? And he, he sounded honestly, he didn't sound Latin, and he sounded like a just you know, there's a little bit of New York accent to his to his talking. Mm-hmm. So, like yeah, yeah. Well, he didn't threaten me at all. He did not threaten me at all. He just let me know this ain't this is not going away. And, he, and he's like, you need to take care of him, you need to do the right thing. He was there for you. And I'm like, right, um, I, go, I go, I don't know. He goes, I go, I don't know who this person is. I said, but, I said, I said, let me call you back later. That's how I left him. And I said, I said, sir, I said, I don't know who this guy is you're even talking about, but mm-hmm. let me give you a call back later, okay? He's like, okay, do the right thing. Which, do the right thing. <laughs> Do the right thing. You know, sounds like a fucking cop that's fishing that's where an investigator or someone's playing games. But I don't, I don't, you're coming up with a lot of fucking details. And I, I don't know if you know your details. But I don't know who the people's names are talking about. I mean, you may, you may be in the wrong king. You may not even know what you're talking about. Exactly. Just one, a little quick recap. This is another one. You know, like how did, how did, like the company's been Ren, he goes, who is this? He goes, hello? I go, hi. He goes, who is this? And I go, I'm returning a phone call. And he goes, what is this in reference to? So That's I said, the exact word? Yeah. Goes, what is this in reference to? In reference to? Wow, you very educated word. Yeah. No, you both spoke to him when I'm on that. I said, what is this in reference to? So I said, I'm returning a call that Simon, I'm returning a message that Simon left this morning. That was the name, Simon? That was the name that we called up. My office mm-hmm. looked at Eric and said, listen, I gave a piece of paper to Mrs. Abelson last week with a number on it. That was a call mm-hmm. to Mrs. Simon. Okay. So mm-hmm. I said, I said, okay. I said, I, I said I'm re- returning the message from Simon. So then he knew mm-hmm. that it was a reference to this fucking nonsense. Mm-hmm. So I said, you know what, what I told him. Said, you know, I go with you as well. You, I know that your family, the family, yeah, the yeah. money. He kept, he kept referencing that, like, we're giving all this money to a fucking family, like, and referencing those two names, Tudo and Tupo or whatever, that yeah. told me I'm giving money to you and someone to do and your right. family. I don't know these people. Never met them. So, and really is, he brother, is his brother, is he the person that's the same person in Yeah, he said he's his brother is incarcerated. And he's he from Broward. He said he, he said he referenced something that was with him in Broward. So I don't know if he's not incarcerated in Broward County, is he from Broward? I don't know who these, who these people are. But I don't like the reference. And your family, and so who, I don't know who the dude is that you're with, or if they're just making up names, or yeah. if I hear who should just go to the FBI and say, you know what, let's, let's play phone tag. Exactly. So I don't, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. You should have been like, while you're doing all this, right? Number one, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Well, he never, he never said he was in a hurry. And he was, you know, I just wanted him to keep talking. Uh-huh. That's why I wanted to get a feeling of who the person is. Yeah, because he wasn't like, you know, he was wondering who I was when I was at the time point. And yeah. it, but when he left, he was like, yo, he was like, listen, he goes, I do this in money. He has not been paid. His family hasn't been paid. It's fucking wrong. And he was like, it's wrong. And he goes, this ain't going away. Yeah. 
like, who likes me? And Sarah to him, he helps you out. I'm like, I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't know him. So I don't know him. You know, my family. I don't know what. I mean, Listen, in, in two seconds, you, you, you read something in the newspaper, you read Google last name, and in three minutes, the homeless man today has technology to know where you live, where you work. Okay, let me find out. But I will call that number. They're picking it up. Whether you want to call it or if you have a friend that you can tell someone to stop the shit. 3057 12 is 5570, correct? 3057 12 is 5570. They need to know that I'm not. It's fucking stupid what they're doing. Okay. I'm not paying anything that you're paying to do because it's killing me. Yeah, no. Okay. It, okay. The, only, the only thing I want to do is collect my reward from the FBI. If I know of course, no. I want these people to go down for the big city and like Dude, you, know, you know what kind of vacation I could get with that money? Exactly. I need my right. vacation. Let me, let me go for the moment. Alright, I'll talk to you later. Call me later. Alright. Prior call, I should have asked you after that call, both parties are threatening to call the FBI. That's correct. Um, has anybody called any law enforcement to report any of this? No. Right. And in this call, we're hearing about several things, a rendition of the, the phone call to the undercover. And Mr. Adelson says, supposedly I'm giving money to you and these two other guys. Anywhere on here or elsewhere does he say, who have you been telling about all the money you've been extorting me? extorting out of me over the last two years. No, it's not mentioned at all. <clears throat> what does Mag Banawa do after they hang up from this call? She calls to Fred Garcia. Okay. I think it's actually a text next. Third, uh, HH. Oh, sorry. We yes, it is a text first. Can we publish that, please? Then a call from her to Garcia next, I, I, is that right? Correct, at 1.22 p.m. All right, let's publish that, please.
person there, obviously going to be doing their, whatever they're doing, they're threatening. And like, they're very, very close to recording their name. Whatever it is, you're getting the tips because my name is involved. And um, it gets just gets better. But I'm like, you know what, of course, you just tell me everything on the phone right now because I don't have time. I'm fucking working. Like, what what is it? Like, I want to handle this and I want to handle this like right now. So, um, okay, they call the office. I was like, look, I tried to contact that number. It's but not a word number. They're like, I was like, why don't you go ahead and start to sit down and go call a freaking number. And then, whatever, that person did it. They go, okay, I'm returning a phone call. Who are you? And they're like, doesn't matter. I'm receiving a phone call regarding something of a paper or whatever. And they're like, okay, well, we know you've been helping you now. Um, they said my name and her name. And I. Um, is it Katie? Is it Katie? Yes. They said her name. Um, they need to help me now. And he's like, I don't even know what the fuck they're talking about. I don't, I don't even know. I, only, I don't even know if you're the right person to talk about. For all I know, it could be another KD or whatever. And I was like, okay, what else do they say? They're like, oh, well, they're a brother. They're a brother of um of this other person that's supposed to be incarcerated. And they're a brother of them and they know him from 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 Broward. I don't know if they were together in Broward and he got out or whatever the case was, and he's like, but this time he needs help. Do the right thing. Like, the fact is, like, we know for a fact that you're helping out there. I'm like, helping who out? Yeah, I haven't helped. I worked for you before. Like, that's it. Helping me out is he working for you. And I was like, I don't know what they're talking about. Let's do the right thing. His name is supposed to be Simon. Um, they're a brother of the person that's in and they said that name. And this, I was like, no, this needs to stop. Like, this needs to stop. Because somebody's harassing me, somebody's harassing your family, and they're putting my name and then I'm in that sort of other person's name. It's getting too detailed. It's somebody that's for sure. Yeah. For sure. He said that the person had, like, he's trying to get him to talk more. He's like, the person has, like, kind of maybe a New York accent. He, some of the words was a little bit, you know, like he, he wasn't threatening at all. He was just saying, you need, it's time for you to help out this person and their family because he needs it. Because we know that you're well, what family? The whole family. The first whole family. It's Sato and his family because they need it. And, and then before the, and he goes, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Um, and the person goes, well, do the right thing. You tell them, well, listen, we got to keep asking you whether we're cops. That's what I said. I was like, why did you just say that? And, oh, no, the person said this is not going to end. Do the right thing. Oh, did, did he get information? Where get the number. Me? Get the phone number. The number that you give me are all numbers. No, no, no. 305 712 6570. They picked up. Because I was getting tired of it. I don't know what's happening or whatever. 702 No, no, no. 305-712-712-6570. That's what I meant. What fuck this is in the box? It's obviously, you know, somebody, they're putting my name, they're putting your name, they're putting in, okay. and they're coming out of the property. Okay? Are you going to work for you? Seven one two six seven six. Tell me what the fuck. 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 Tell me what the
KK, please. Oh. Three one five. Seven one two five seven zero. You sure that's the number, right? One more time. Three one five. Did Garcia call the undercover? We believe so. There was a hang-up call. All right. Did he leave a message? No. Did he ever actually talk to the undercover? No. Was there a voice, outgoing voicemail similar or fitting the description, the colorful description that we got? Yes. All right. Okay. Let's play LL, please. Like, I don't understand the joke. I'll get it. 
So it's just an answering machine no one spoke to you? Uh, no. And like, were they talking all the time? And they were asking the team all of a sudden. I don't know, like, um, since I can't really remember, they were trying to find out for me, you know? And it was like they, they said, I don't know if they said their name was, was whatever, the Google or Apple or whatever. Shit, they said on the country machine. All of a sudden. Now, now it has a nice machine. Like a voice in the other name. What's the voice that I'll say? Yeah, like, I, I don't know, let, let me find let me find out, because it's like I can't, like, you call it at work, and then I can't hear yeah. the sign. You get call, me? When you call, do you call with, uh, with the call block? Huh? Yeah. Do you call? Yeah, yeah. but it doesn't oh. matter. It's, no matter what point you use it, it's still short, you know? Well, it shows, it doesn't show who's calling it. I know. I know how to block a call. Right. That's not the point, but it's like... It's our success. So I did that, ran it seven times. I'll be there in one minute. This is Without Tylenol? Um, the blanket in it, it's just a minute and it's ibuprofen, it's not Tylenol. Yeah. Um, okay. I, you know, it's like fucking lady. Get the fuck out of the way, stupid ass. Yeah, I would, I would do this. I would. Um, I guess just call again later. Yeah, but let's say, you know what, with all this crank calling, I'm gonna call from every fucking body's phone and fucking leaving a message in everybody's fucking phone. For everybody's phone. Wanna play games? Wanna play games? We're really fucking up because they... It's me, it's so for you. And they, they called, and I mean, the, the only thought in my head is these so I've got one thing. Maybe you can find out, or I'm going to wait a couple of days, and then I may call the person back. So the person was, they, when they answered the phone at first, they weren't that ghetto, and as they started talking to me, they started act, talking more tough, but it was more like a, I could hear a New York accent in there. And it's yeah, kind of like well, I know, the, the voicemail sound is New York, but I got to find out what's going on. But I'm saying, I'm going to... I'm gonna call from somebody else's phone because I don't want my phone to, you know, I use his phone for work. Right. And, and, the, and the, the thing is, it's like somebody crank calling me. Right. Listen, one thing is, it's either maybe that person will want to meet someone and talk to them about what their issue is, or I want to ask you. No, they're gonna have an issue because um, you don't just go threatening people throwing out me. Well, they're, they're saying that I'm, that I'm helping a kid, or not me, but. My family's helping and Katie and her family and some other guy that's named again with a T that I've never, I'm like, dude, I've never met any of these people. He goes, well, you're not, but the family has been and they've been uh, her and her family. And you husband. haven't met, but then they're, like, it makes no sense. But, but, but he's like, he's like, if he asked me who I was, and I was like, none of your business. So I was almost, well, in hindsight, what I should have said was, who, because I have a big, because this is a big family and there's lots of cousins. Yeah. Who, who in my, because the Adelson family is a big family. Yeah. So what I should have said to the guy is, who in my family, who in the Adelson family uh -huh. owes somebody money? Give me the name. Yeah, of course. Give me the name, and then I will go to that person in that family and say, who did you not pay? I want to know the name. I want to know the name. The only name they keep throwing out is that. This the, this Abelson family is helping out Katie and some guy named T and their family and this guy needs your help and it's not right and he's like this problem's not going away he goes this is not going away he's not okay that's what's bad right there that's right. the fuck up like, that you're not helping so, like who the fuck are you or the fucking like who so are you listen that's like me calling someone up and being like yeah I know you spelled JFK um you pay me okay well guess what. You didn't tell Jack. It's the wrong example. Like, what does that have to do with anything? I'm well, dead. My, my point is that. Well, that's because, well, because well, because Jack died in 1963, and you weren't born then. My point is, is that I had nothing to do with any of this craziness. I want to know who who in my family owes somebody money, because I'm going to go to that person and say, "What's going on?" And that's uh, what I'm. That's the exactly. the next conversation I have with this person is is going to be 
need, if, if it comes to it, me saying, who owes money? If someone owes money, you gotta give me a name. Now, yeah, exactly. Tell me who my family, you know what I mean? my mom, who are my mom, my mom doesn't know who any of these people are. My yeah, dad I want to doesn't know who any of these people are. Whoever this fucking person is trying to fucking say shit or do whatever it is to your family, starting to harass your family, like it's getting me mad. So well, I, mean, I don't know, I don't know why they keep bringing up um, people who I've never met. I don't, that's why it's like, who are you? Number one, okay, you need something, who are you then? What's your real name? What's your address? Who do you have a problem with? Yeah, who, who in my family owes you money? And don't say the last name because I'm going to go to that person and tell them, if you owe this person money, what is it about, number one? And, and then I'm going to tell them, go pay them. But exactly. you can't tell me who to go talk to. Not like, oh, somebody with the last name Adelson. Well, guess what? That's like saying someone with the last I'm name of Rodriguez. Like, yeah, that? someone with the last name Rodriguez. That's why. Well, give me the fucking first name. And I will go talk to if it was my brother who was behind it. I'm gonna fucking find out. I mean, fine. If it was my brother, I'll try to make a different reward money. The brother's a piece of shit. So I'm saying, like, give me the name of who owes your friend, or friend's family money. And this guy said to me. He said, listen, I was with him up in Broward. I knew everything that went on. I was up okay. with him in Broward. That's what I'm talking about. about that. Yeah, something about Broward. I was up with him in Broward, too. I don't know if some guy he's talking about. But he said he's a family member. He said he was a family member. He said he was somebody incarcerated. No. It was this, that guy's Kuko or whatever his brother. He said, I'm his brother. I was with him up in Broward when he told me what everything that happened. Exactly Who was like up with him in Broward and told I don't know what he was I don't know if he was well, in jail. Like, he, he, needs to, he needs to, like, fucking, if, like, if people just can be fucking Googling shit or whatever it is. Well, and that's, and well, exactly. But the only reason I make a father and call you is because they keep wanting to talk about you. Or if I was the wrong person, then I would feel even more. But if this person doesn't matter, like, you're still harassing my fucking family. And I wanted to stop. I mean, when you show, when you meet someone face to face on the street, when you send them a letter, and then when you start calling their office, the next call is to the FBI. Exactly. No, and, I agree. And I don't go there. I don't. I don't want anyone to go to jail because you know what? People get mad when they go to jail and they feel like they have to get somebody back. Same reason when when my jet ski got stolen. I did not, I don't even care who fucking stole. Okay. Next we've got a text, MM. Who is this to and who is it from? It's to Catherine McDaniel from Sigfredo Garcia. Did he <coughs> call three times to the undercover? Do we know? No, we don't believe so. He only received one missed call. Okay. Next we have NN McDaniel to the defendant. Can we publish NN, please? Spanish, the other is Puto. No, Puto. Puto is like 
Well, my mind was just, you know, hey, it's not a thing. <laughs> but supposedly that voicemail that they have set up, the guy says people, what sounds like people. And then what, is, what does he say on the voicemail? Like it's something in Spanish. And you read puto, and it's in Spanish. So he has a message in Spanish. Saying, where the fuck this is? He can fucking call me and stop bringing my fucking family. And then I'll just keep running. Yeah. But they don't pick up. So now somebody either spoke because what the fuck is going on? Or I don't know. Alright. Well that's that's good. That's good the person can so like all the things are like running in my head because it's like with all the names that you're saying and like maybe it's like Somebody trying to like be like you know trying to be in a apartment or talking or whatever like you know there were so many things like going on. Yeah, I I I think the same thing too. But so then it's like yeah, but then you know it's just people you can trust and you can't. But then it's like I don't know, I don't know. I I honestly like it's, it's like aggravating me. If I'm on the phone, don't talk to me. Be quiet. Who is someone reading the newspaper and playing games? Like I said, yeah, and I don't know how the fuck they got your name, but they didn't use a last name, so it could be anybody. It could have been another, another Katie and another Taco, or whoever the fuck they said. I don't remember the name. But the, the point is, is that they need to stop. No, exactly. Well. Look, I'm on the phone. Okay, I don't care, but I'm on the phone right now. So don't talk to me right now. Like, I'm boiling right now. Like, you don't understand. Like, it's pissing me off. Like, pick up the phone and call me. Like, now, you don't want to pick up the phone? You want to drive, so you don't want to pick up the phone. So, it's one of two things. No, I, I got you with that. And I just, you know, fucking call it here. Basically, you said, hey, you're messing with my family, and if you don't stop, you're not a problem. It's Spanish. And whoever it is, they're going to have a problem with us, no matter what. Maybe you have a problem with them. Maybe you have a problem with me too. I mean, exactly. Listen, if you don't, if you don't, have a problem with either one of us, or even if, like, if I'm in this or not. You're, you're coming up to my fucking mom on the street, and you're sending letters to their house, and you're fucking calling my dad's office. The office. These yeah. messages, like, that's no, three times. Like, 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 no. Like, no, he was living. My friend was on my friend, and I was like, look, can you do me this favor? Because it's like, I'm not a guy, and I don't know what it's me they're talking about. And then he's like, that's some fucked up shit. Yeah. And it's like, don't worry, nothing. Like, no matter what, like, whatever it is, like, I'm going to handle it. Well, I'm glad. Yeah. So I, I feel better. I definitely feel better. I, I apologize for not going to getting a Hallmark card, but I, I got a little something, so... I'm just, it, it, it's like right now I'm about to go to like taking, like I'm, I'm taking the Zoom account because I'm like, I'm like, I'm on X, like you don't need to like I want to punch somebody in the face so bad. Picture yourself. One thing is like when somebody, I understand it and I feel for your parents come, and I can't come to them. Don't come, don't come to my parents, like, like my parents are fucking old, like, like dude, it's like, you What are you doing doing these threats? That's why, like. Like, my parents are still in that part, I was like, you better understand it. Imagine if somebody's doing this to my mom, doing this to your mom. And that's when he had gone angry. He's like, look, I don't know what it is, but I don't want to get into anybody's business. You know? But if they did mention your name, I don't like that.
And that fact that nobody's picking up what's going on is like frustrating me. There was no voicemail before, now there is. Now there is. The next phone call is going to be the freaking. It's not going to be good to see the way. No matter what way it ends, it's not going to be good for whoever is messing around. No. I mean, it's. That's it. And listen, I don't want, I don't want to. So I don't, don't, want, have, I don't so. want any problems. Imagine, like, look at this. I'm not taking up somebody else's, you know? Like, I don't even know what the fuck is going on. And I listen, the last thing I want to do is some guy, the last thing I want to do is have some guy who's trying to score money go to jail and then feel like he's sitting in jail because of me. Like, no, like, that's not what I'm about. Like, I'm not trying to do that. Yeah, like, that's not what I'm about. Like, I'm like, no, like, fucking just leave us alone. I'm not looking to send people to jail. That's not how I live life. I didn't mean that it's, but it's going to happen if this guy keeps doing that. He's, the police will get involved, they'll get in trouble. Of course. You know, that's that's right. Right. It's like, you're used to be calling somebody's business. It's wrong with people. Well, you can't be sending letters. You can't be showing up on the screen. Exactly. Like, I'm going to... Yeah, it's like, 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 you know, or it could be someone like thinking like, oh, it's like, the fact that this is it. The, the next step also, what I'm thinking is in a couple of days, I'll tell the person, hey, do you need a name of someone in this family that owes you money? Because exactly. I'm going to go pay them a visit. Give me a name. Is it my brother? Is it Robert? And, and, and I'll take care of it. Yeah, and I, I will see that if someone owes somebody money, they will pay, but you got to give me a name because you're talking to the wrong people. Exactly. And, <coughs> and frankly, yeah, I mean, well, who I'm, are you? Hey, I have cousins. I've got a huge family. I gotta get in there. I'll keep it you know, there's probably just computer and everything, and I'm very excited. Do you want me to do you want me to try to meet up with you or do you want me to just leave it for you to pick up tomorrow? Um yeah. If you can. Do you want me to try and meet up with you? I, I want to I want to if you can, but if you can't you know, I'll call you when I get out of here. Okay, I was just gonna work out. Okay. Yeah, I know what I'm trying to do because like, I can't. I have to go all the way through it. Go work out and call me. And, then I'll... and I'm not going to try to work out. Do what? And I'm not going to try to work out. And then I'm going to try to work out. Go get to the time. Go get to the time. This is not going to come up one time. Don't ever let me walk on yourself. You know that. You know that is not. Okay. Hit me up. It's okay, Gibby. Meet you, or you'll pick it up tomorrow. Okay, we'll go. I'll call you okay. in like an hour. Just like an hour. Okay, call me in an hour. Bye. Next, we have OO. No, sir, I've got three segments picked out for a total of. 20 ish minutes. Please continue. Hey, what's going on? How are you doing? Good, good. Uh, working out. Is it a long you're playing? Yeah. So. What happened this afternoon? Uh, no. Nothing, no. But I did. I'd rather not talk to him. Yeah, okay. So, um, tomorrow I was going to tell you that um, actually Dad is going to test it right now. We're almost finished, but she came up with a bonus suggestion. I was calling her that tomorrow. Um, my book is that we have a good ticket to go to my brother's field in London festival. And so we have tickets. I think it's supposed to be from 1130 to 1030 at night. And so it's just between three and one day. Oh, really? Yeah. So, um, so then we said I should bring the kids to the courthouse on our way because a 
know that he won't get there at any, at any time, that I should actually um, reverse during the parking. It's like a parking by the Riverside Hotel, I think they said. And, um, I'm in the garage by the Tecano. Yeah, so that was just a chance that you shot the park there. I said, you know what? I mean, I can do that. Would that be all right with you? Yeah, or you can. Oh, and actually, the other one was getting quick. Okay. I was saying, I'd love to take one. That was kind of even one. So we buffer again, I got one. Let me see, I got an analogy. Well, but it doesn't matter if it's, you can see the difference in the Uber car in your driveway because it's an Uber to let go of that. It's fine too. I just realized that we didn't have to park there. So, I think we would try to park there. Yeah, I mean, it's not like you have to park it. Yeah, it's not like you have to park it. You just get dropped off. Right. But, you know, it's going to fix that if you can't get a parking spot, you won't be able to park the house. Okay, I just want to verify that it's okay. Yeah. And where are you going to be tomorrow? I'm going to pause. Where is it? Yeah, I know. Well, we can have to go. I thought you were going to go. Okay, that's what it's going to be. And I'm going to go. 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 Yeah. No, I um I mean nothing uh nothing nothing big. I I gotta say, I think it's I'm about I'll I'll tell you what I think. Um if you're if you're at the point and there's a chance that you can come by either on our way down or on our way back. <laughs> Um, you're checking, checking the address. I mean, I'll tell you where I am. I'm at Memorial Hospital. So there's, um, like, there's like zero parking. I have to come yeah, down the stairs. I remember. Not, 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 not. Two wives will make you and he was married six times, ten kids, and thirty-four grandchildren, and like ten great grandchildren. So, okay. so but we're so I'll I'll tell you something to see, but it's nothing, yeah. uh, nothing new. Yeah. And uh, if someone, you know, see. yeah, we'll we'll talk later. But I, I will tell you one thing. Mm -hmm. I'm about. 99% sure. That's what you thought originally. That's what you thought you were. <laughs> yeah, that was, I'm, a, I'm, 90, I'm 99 to, uh, I'm 99% sure that's what it is. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. The, the number one reason is this. Too well spoken. And I made it clear, like I don't, I don't know who these people are. The person seems surprised. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, he was, he was like, really? I go, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, listen, I don't know who these people are that you're talking about. So, and then he, he, he took the route of like, you got to take care of. So you're taking care of this family. I go, I won't take care of anybody. I said, I with me to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Not language. No, I mean, that someone says do the right thing. And I'm going to tell you something. Think about a, a high school, um, you know, a high school fight or a high school threat. Well, I'm going to kick your mm -hmm. I mean, just that simple. I mean, listen, you're getting, that's just how people, your dog shits on the carpet, kill him. 
I'm just I'm gonna be you know, and, you know what I'm saying? Like I even talk like that about them, like you just smack his ass. Like that way he hears the threat. If you're do you notice the one thing missing from everything? Never once never once is there a threat. Do you notice the one mom? That's the most. I mean, even even if you don't mean it. I mean, I I'd say to Ben, I'm gonna kick your ass if you hit me again. Do you know what I'm saying? Sure. Why that? Thing you tell someone is, I'm gonna mm -hmm. I'm gonna beat your ass, or I'm gonna do this, or I'm gonna break your legs, or I'm gonna do this. Like, do you notice? Not one time has there been a threat, even in even in like your health or your or anything like that. That. Um, and it makes it, it makes complete sense given a the timeline. That's what I think. Two years later, mm -hmm. I mean, they, you have to understand. They want. And listen, if I had any information, I would, I would, I would help out. I don't, I don't have any. But you gotta understand. Without a question, without a question, I would be beyond shocked if the family doesn't hire their own private investigators. I would be beyond shocked. What is it? They have to, they're not going to knock on a door and go, hey, this? Oh, okay. Just thought I'd stop by and ask. They, they have to come up with a plan that's going to stir the pot so that if there is something going on, what are they looking to What are they looking to achieve? <clears throat> What are they looking to, you got to say to yourself, what are they looking to get out of doing this nonsense? Mm -hmm. if, if it's money, I'll be shocked. Because the best money is you, you go to someone and you tell them what you're going to do to them. And you give them 48 hours and you tell them where to meet somebody, who's going to drop it off, and if there's any nonsense, you know, you know, this is going to happen to you. That's it. And if you get one of us, you can get one of us, but someone else will take you out. Like, it's, it's done with such precision and being ruthless. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so what happens is it squeezes somebody, and they don't have a choice to think straight, and they just go in and give you the money. I'm saying, like, even if you're innocent, it's like someone saying to me, listen, I'm going to the Board of Dentistry tomorrow unless you walk in your back office and write me that check. I am going to the Board of Dentistry tonight when I go home and filing my complaint, and I will sue you tomorrow. I promise you, if you don't write that check back. It puts you on the, on the fence real quick. The lady whose mom wanted the whole case, like, I don't respond what she spent. And she goes, I want the money. And I said, I agree that I would give you the money or whatever fail. And she goes, oh, but now that I'm oh, sure. Yeah. She goes, no, I want the money for absolutely everything. I already spoke to my attorney. There will be a lawsuit at the board complaint file before the end of this week if I'm not able to pick up that check. Do you understand? Work was fine. So we'll have to work over half the work to what do you think I did? I wrote the check. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So but that myself people aren't looking for a check. They're not. What what do they want you to do? What what's the one thing they want? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with the truth. I, I got it, but they don't know that. So what do you think the one thing they want? They want everybody to start talking. Mm -hmm. They want 
you to hand deliver yourself because they think you know something, but they want you to hand deliver yourself and start talking as much as you can and when you walk in. Because otherwise, if, if they were to just come to you tomorrow and say, they get the same result. But I'm saying, if the cops were to come to you tomorrow and say, Donna, mm-hmm. come down, we need to talk to you. We'd be like, you know, I don't need this aggravation. If your business card, if you or hear of anything, I absolutely will. Right? But if you go ahead and you make it seem like, you know, you're being extorted or blackmailed or anything, like that, then what are you going to do? You're going to run down there and start talking. Exactly. It's like what's the last one? Do you know what that? Of course. These are not. This is not someone who started. This is not someone who started yesterday. This is not someone who's dumb. This is someone who's smart. And you know, a lot of times this is what this is what goes on. If someone comes, you know. But it's it's real odd that it's a year. The amount of time that's happened is insane. I mean it would be like having a dental office and be like, you know what? I came from forty years ago, let me turn over the collection. It's four years ago, how, how do you not realize that you weren't paying on a big case that you did four years ago? I mean, none of it makes any sense. I mean, that's why I think it's more that um, with you know, the lack of threats. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's no, there's no threat. Soon will be fucked. Like, what, what does that mean? Is it, someone's going to write a bad review on uh, Google tomorrow? You know, I mean, why, it's almost like they were afraid to say that they're going to break your leg. Like, almost like they can't go in that. They can't do that. they do that, they're going to cross lines that they themselves can't cross. You know what I'm saying? I just hope they don't go and talk to them. Well, what they do, I mean, listen, they can uh, If they are they're not, they're not far from just going to the police. And when they go to the police, too. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's that's the other thing too. Is like, yeah, he said, you don't see them, but the last thing you want to do is that. Well, I don't, I don't want her. I don't want to scare her. I don't. Either. I know. She, she was one. She fucked up. She was one. She was one. She's finally over being scared. Right. And she heard that she was in the process. Absolutely. And you know the thing is, this mom is that everybody handles every situation differently. It's like somebody has a death in the family and if they don't act devastated well, does it mean that they have more responsible for it? No. You know, everybody handles differently. I mean, some people, you know, it's like fight or flight. I mean, some people are confrontational, some people have a nice day, some people just turn their back and walk away, some people are You know, you get, you know, and, and none, and who's to say what's right and who's to say what's wrong? Mm-hmm. You know, there is, there is nothing. Uh, but, but that's what, you know, my original feeling was to end with me, but that's what you got to protect them. Yeah, I don't want, I, I don't want Wendy to, to then get shot and now then worry about her safety. Well, I, it's funny. I, I called, I called Katie, and I, I said to her, "Listen, I said, I, I said you're the only one, Katie. I know, you know, I, I know of other Katies, I, you know, but I, I've known you a long time. I don't know if they keep referencing you or." And I, I told her, "I said if, it's, mm-hmm. if I'm wrong and they're referencing somebody else." If it is a common last name, or common first name, if it didn't tell me last name, and I said, it's a, if you're the wrong person, then I feel horrible that they're trying to bring you into this or whatever. But she had, she told me she had somebody call, and uh, the voicemail wasn't set up before, and then uh, 
She called a couple. She called actually. She lost her number. She called a couple. Times. And then it was on. Um, and then there's a voicemail. And it was a fan. So she has a friend of hers who left a message for that person. For that person to. I think it was a guy that she had called him. I think. I don't, I don't know for sure. It basically, you need to stop or you're going to be having a very, 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 very give them a call. That's kind of the message I got this afternoon. Mm -hmm. and That person is the same voice on the voicemail. So I I think somebody um, somebody playing games and fishing because it's the same it's the same guy and it's not and the person building off of probably hiding who they are. You gotta remember something too. Somebody's going to do something. They don't. They they when come to you. They're going to come to you with hat and glass. They don't want you to see with them. You know the whole thing that I told you before. It doesn't. It doesn't have to. If you look at there's 15 different things from the the language, the fact that there's no threats, the fact that the person's devices that they can easily be traced to. The fact that the person's language makes sense to me, it was do the right thing. That is not that that to do the right thing. Same school speech. Do the right thing. And the person wasn't angry. I mean, they were pretty calm talking to me. I was real nice to them, and I said, "Listen, I'm trying to figure out what's going on." But I don't. Um, yeah, that one's just a little bit of a place. Let me let you go work here. I thought you'd find that interesting. Couple questions to follow up on that one. Judge. So here in this call OO, we hear the defendant finally saying the name Katie to Donna, right? Yes. And is that in the context of maybe this is the wrong Katie? Yes, it was. Are there any conversations where the defendant and Donna are discussing how this Katie is the one that's been extorting them for over two years? No, not at all. No, no further questions about that call, Your Honor. Very well. Members of the jury, we're going to take our lunch break at this point. Once again, I'm going to remind you, do not discuss the case with each other or anyone else. Do not watch any news reports or seek any information about this matter. We will resume with the testimony of Agent Sanford after the lunch break. Please report back by 1.20, and we will get started at 1.30.
Unless the parties have anything to raise, we'll go into recess. Please be back at 120 as well. Yes, yes Your Honor. Agent, I'm slightly curious.
Bring them in. Everyone can be seated. Ms. Kappelman, you may continue with your examination. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, I think we're on RR. Hey, what's up? Your phone was weird. It was like it was doing a dial tone. Yeah, I, it was weird. I tried picking it up. <laughs> you can't break down on us now, Dugan. <laughs> we're, we're, we're almost to the finish line. <laughs> Exactly what I wanted to say, so 
Pause it, Miss Dugan. Silence the devices. Please check your devices. Place them on silent or turn them off. Please continue. The birthday gift for a married man with kids. What is Sigfredo Garcia's birthday? Um, I believe it's like April 27th. And on what date was this call RR placed? It was on 429-16. All right, so his birthday was two days prior? Correct. Okay, I want to skip ahead to May 4th of 2016. Did we have another bump on that date? We did. Okay, tell us about that. Um, that one was a text message from the undercover to Donna Adelson. I can publish that message. <clears throat> I'm sorry? I don't think it's an end. I'm not objecting to it. Hmm. This wasn't an end? Oh, it is because it's on the wire disk. Okay. Like all the texts. Okay. Sorry, Judge. Sausage being made. Um, okay, so if you'll read this text for us. This was sent from the undercover to Donna Adelson? Yes, ma'am. Okay, go ahead. So you don't take me serious. You think I'm playing. You have some puta call me to see if I'm for real. If you think what Katie, ba baby, daddy did for you can't come back, you're fucking crazy. I want the money now or I'm going after the 100K. Okay, can we play SS, please?
Is $100,000 significant in this case? Yes. Why is that? Um, that's what was on the flyer about a reward. I'm oh, sorry? That's what was on the flyer regarding a reward. Thank you. All right, so not the flyer that we've seen in this case, but something that was put out to the public? It was, and I believe it was also on the same flyer that was handed to her by the undercover. Meaning it was mentioned in that article, or? I believe so. Okay, I understand. Okay. Do I organize? I need to pull it off. I have a pretty job in, but I didn't even open it. Because since I wanted a kid, like, I wasn't going to. You see what was in there at all? No, what the fuck did you put in there? Where's that bag? I haven't opened it. Where is it? It's in my purse, I think. Like in my own place, I couldn't look at another guy. So you haven't opened up the public space? No. Why? Why? Because I don't want to see it. I'll open it later. Here you go. No, it's, it's not like I put a fucking answer in there. Well, please give me that. I don't want to open it. I got him a guinea pig for his birthday. Uh huh. You've been in there for three weeks and you're trouble. Yeah, I'm cool. Okay, I gotta get him. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Are you okay. It was supposed to be a birthday present for somebody. If you know anybody's okay. birthday. And this is going on, so. Okay. Well, I, would it be okay if you told it was for me or do you think that's a bad idea? Um, I don't know. Well, Take a look and then you can tell me. Up in the bottom thing, there's a very nice gift card in there. Okay. It's okay. You're fucking in here, though. I know. You know, somebody said, he told me, oh my god, that felt so bad. Like, he's like, bro, like, because my mom always, always gets him a present, right? Like, he took us out, but he always gets him up for, for dinner and shit, whatever. My mom always does that, like, for him. Um, and he was like, well, maybe you ever get to your present, because I need to get a little present. <laughs> I said, maybe you ever get to your present. I'm like, well, you're not making a doll anymore. Like, get over it. All right, let's move on to TT, please. Let's go. Got the drugs, he's fine. Um, let him get started on it. And it is, if you don't think it'll cause anything, you can tell him this is from the uh, when you open up the present. Okay. Remember the person you're scared. I'm gonna put that, I'm gonna go, yeah, I'm gonna open it now before, I don't know, because he's scaring me. Was it in your car or is it your house? It was my house. But I, I get it. Well, go fucking look what's in there and okay. tell me if it's, okay, if it's okay for his birthday present. Okay. All right? Where's my birthday present? You get nothing. Uh, All right, I'll talk to you later. You you got got take, I got your tickets to the concert. I know. Thank you. I have to thank you. Where's my birthday? It's not your birthday then. You. Wait, you wait yeah. your birthday. Whatever. Yeah, it's uh, not every, every feel it's your other goddaughter. It's your goddaughter's birthday at the end of the month. Oh, yeah? yeah? I can't all these people that want me to adopt them. No, well, you already know my kids. I got, like, six, I got like 60-year-old women in offices yeah. asking me, saying, where's your kids? They got their math and they go, can you adopt me? I'll give you the Father's Day card. Fucking amazing. I got Scotty wants to be adopted. I got like eight people that want to be adopted. I want to be a doctor. I don't 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 want to be a doctor. I
Gershom. Okay, Judge, we are going to replay the first few seconds of the portion we played of that previous call. Okay. Anyway, um, where, where we're at. Um, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Okay, it's the right thing to look at. Anyway, um, where, where we're at. Um, wait, wait, wait. Look, you didn't even want me all the way to check. I don't have enough to send in. She said, no, I think you should. And I was like, I'm not going to do it. You're not going to hurt with a lot to show Exactly. Um, so instead of like taking 500, you may take a little less and, and then just give it to him twice. But definitely give him it as soon as you get in. Get it in him and then give it to him Does again. Does he have a like, flavor? Uh, Do they ask you? No, it's like, I, no, they don't have flavor. But if you give him a fucking teaspoon, it'd be like, fucking swallow. I know. This is the biggest baby about it. All right. So, I know. I know. I know. Swallow it or fucking smack his ass. We're talking to be pain. If you, 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 if Take an ibuprofen, grind it up, and put it with some applesauce on a spoon, and let them bake it that way. So give them, like, the liquid? Give them the liquid. And then... No, but I'm saying, like, I've been giving them Tylenol. I just have an off-end motion. So I'm going to get another bottle of motion to let it finish. Just give give them motion, not Tylenol. You you can do it. But this is the ibuprofen, the Motrin with the amoxicillin. I'll be feeling so much better tomorrow. Okay. But it really takes, well. you have to have it in your system for 24 hours for it to really. Back on him, and I was like, oh, this is not good. No. Okay. 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 You can always, I hate doing it, but you can always take a quarter of your bar. I know. And break it, and then break it into if another. If I quarter. had, I swear, that's another thing. If I had, I would. Like you, would, you the whole family would be on fucking planet. Why don't you just blow some weed in his face? No, I'm kidding. Uh, no, who are you? I'm who kidding. I'm kidding. You? But no, but I got um, he's got he's got the drugs. He's fine. Um, <laughs> let him get started on it, and it is. If you don't think it'll prove. Anything you say, you can tell them it's from maybe uh, when you open up the present. Okay. Remember the person you said? Carrie, I'm going to put that, I'm going to go, yeah, I'm going to open it now before, I don't know, because he's carrying me. Was it in your car or is it your house? It was my house. But I, I hit it. Go so, so fucking look what's in there and okay. tell me if it's, okay, if it's okay for his birthday present. All right. Where's my birthday present? You get nothing. Uh, All right, I'll talk to you later. You got you. Tic- I got you tickets to the concert. The I know. Thank you. I like to thank you. Where's my birthday? It's not your birthday today. <laughs> wait, you wait yeah. your birthday. Whatever. Yes, yeah, right. I would feel better. It's your other goddaughter. It's your goddaughter's birthday then. The one. Oh, yeah. I can't all these people that want me to adopt them. No, well, you already know my kids. I got like six. I got like sixty-year-old women in offices asking, saying, "Where's your kids?" And they got nothing happening. They go, "Can you adopt me?" Yeah. 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 Yeah
On now to you, you. So, 
it's apparent some other contact has occurred. Is this timing of this call consistent with that being from the text bump that we saw a few moments ago? Yes, it's it's the, the same day, the afternoon of when it happened. And the text bump indicates I want the money now or I'm going after the 100K, right? Correct. The 100K, you said it was a reward. A reward for what? Reward for information leading to um, the investigation leading to the arrest of uh, the killer for Dan Markell. And at any time, does Donna or anyone in this case text the undercover and say, do that? No, they didn't. Go get the reward. Solve the case. Nope. They did not. All right, so let's go to the, to the next day. What do we decide about the... All right, we're skipping VV and we're going to WW. XX, I missed an item on our sheet, meeting at pool. What does that refer to? Um, Charlie Adelson met with his parents at the Icon. We tried to cover it, sent some, agents, sent some agents in to try to record, but they could not get close enough to them. Where did the meeting occur? Um, it occurred like in the pool area inside the Icon. All right, so they were... The three of them sat down at the pool area and had a chat or something yeah. else? Yeah, apparently they were in a 
like a private pool area inside the building. Um, and they were in the pool area by themselves talking. Okay. All right. Sorry, I missed that. Let's jump forward to why why. Hey, let me, okay. let me let me call you in a little bit, okay? I may uh, I may just call you from the landline. I'm in my friend Adam's place in Miami. Uh, okay, I'm in the Gables, so I'll, I'll probably call you from the landline. Right. Okay. 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 Yeah, I'll call you in a little bit. Okay. All right, ZZ, please. Okay. Well, like trying to find my son is like I, I don't even know where he is. Just look, look for the oh, right. monkey, monkey bars. Yeah, that's how we him, right? Okay, just give me a quick recap because um, but I like what exactly on the time. Um, and I'm not asking you to to do anything about it. Mm -hmm. At all. Come on, come on. Yes, you gotta put an appointment. Uh, go ahead. The, the person sorry. So you so you don't take me serious. And you you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, the person says, so you don't take me serious and you have some puta calling you up baby Katie's baby daddy. So and then it was like, so you don't know, so you don't, or something, and then there was something about it for you. Uh -huh. And then there was something about, like, you don't, you don't respect what was done for you or something like that. You don't respect? Oh, you don't? No, you don't. He was, he was like, well, he, was, he was like 20 words. It, it started off and said, so you don't think I'm serious. And then it was... You have some He's on the phone. Uh -huh. Okay. Go, come on, me. Yeah. I'm listening. So, so you don't take me serious, and you have some poop job call me up, Katie's baby daddy. Uh, you don't, like, you don't appreciate what was done for you or something like that. All right. And then that was it. That was it. It just ended. All right. But it, it, it came from that same number, the person didn't block the number they're texting from. Yeah, yeah, no, we already got to that. We got to that yeah. point already. I right, got you. So don't, uh -huh. don't have right. anything. And I, I have a feeling, you know, it's one of two things. And I I could care less. I just want the person to stop harassing me. Go, go on the phone. Okay, got you. But I, and, got evidently, you. evidently, if each year, whoever called, Mm -hmm. The person, the person to give a shot. No, I had, a, I had, a, I had a friend that called, but yeah, mm -hmm. whoever it was that called, this, this person texted my mom at two o'clock in the morning to really give a shit. Now he's referencing Katie. He's, he referenced the only person's name he referenced in the text was Katie's baby daddy. Yeah. So. Uh -huh. I'm like, you know, I don't know how to use that. Like, yeah, no, it really has the baby daddy. Yeah. Like, yeah, so the, the, the weird thing is, whoever it is could really give a shit about what was said to him. Because he has no problem continuing to send text messages from that number. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the part. That's the part that really boggles my mind. Yep, so well, don't, don't do anything. Not afraid, obviously. Somebody is thinking no, no, or something. Somebody that can get all of this information. This is I mean, the personal phone, phone calls, uh, a text, somebody, you know, like it's, it's, it's a lot. Okay, but this is my this is my one fear. Uh -huh. Nobody can protect somebody all the time. If it's a one percent chance that it is a bad guy who did something 
that, you know, I worry about my dad's safety going into an office where... Uh, no, I get you, bro. You don't have to, like... And that's, that's, that's what... Four hours in the night. So, yeah. And they go, like, no. Yeah. Yeah, that's what, right. you know. And, and whoever it is, if the reverend is to me, you don't think I'm scared? Yeah. And whoever it is, like, whatever, whoever calls, the person you're going to talk to. But, like, I got, I, no. He, no. he called him a poop that, dog. That becomes even more of, like, okay, yeah. what are you doing now? What are you doing now? Like, is it somebody that's waiting for you to be like, hey, like, like, or well, like somebody trying to like message you, like, you know what I mean? Like, we're yeah. just in the line. It becomes more, lot, more of like, damn, he's a fetish. Like, what, what is going on? And then if they do, they just throw a lot of information out that I don't know. So that's, which is crazy. The question is, where did they get it from? Why don't we just go collect the reward, whoever has the information? Exactly. All right, all right. We're, we're yeah. doing the same thing we're kind of doing, and it's just, it's just getting to the point where it's like, what so don't, don't do anything. I just don't, uh, it's, it's just aggravation. That's all. I just want my family left alone. Yeah. That's, that's my day. I'm going to have a day off, so I'm going to hang out with everybody and be with nonsense. Right. So. Like, I try to remember so many, and it's so hard because you put all so many other details behind it that it's like when I have to, like, think it out of my head, like, I'm all over the place because, like, you just talk so much more of what's not necessary. No, I know. I know. I would do that. We go off on tangents and shit. I just, listen, you're just my friend. That's the only reason why I'm going to do I know, it's pissing me off because it's like, I don't even know, like, you know, I'm, me, I'm trying to help you out. And figure it out, like, what the hell's going on. So. Okay. I wish, I wish I knew what was going on, but I'm talking crazy people out there. Alright, yeah. so. right, hey, good, good luck with his, uh, endo appointment. I gotta call him because I don't want to do anything. So, yeah. I'm not all right, I'll talk to you. Okay, next we have a text. AAA, can we publish that, please? And if you'll tell us about this text. This text is from, it's from Catherine uh, McVanwa to Sigfredo Garcia. It says, call me if you can step out of the office for a second. Okay. Play a BBB, please. Calling 
So we were on May 5th. Let's go to May 6th. On May 6th, does Donna Adelson call the undercover? Yes. How many times does she call the undercover? Um, I believe maybe three times. Okay. She Does she leave a voicemail one time? I believe so. How many times does she actually have a conversation with the undercover? Just once. All right. And Judge, that call is on State's Exhibit 107. Move to publish that call at this time. You may. Look. This is this is Mrs. Adelson. Is this um, Look. Sammy? Sammy. Okay. My grandchildren had my phone before, so. Um, I Can you I'm Mrs. Adelson. My yes. Yes. Yeah. My grandchildren yes. had my phone before, so that's and I just thought that you called. So, okay. I would, I, you, I would, you left the message on my on my voicemail. Right, I did. So, no. <laughs> this is my problem. You approached me on Alton Road. You handed me an article from the newspaper about my ex-son-in-law. You told me I need to call you and help your friend who was in prison. Now, at the time you did that, I didn't understand what you were talking about. I didn't call you back. Then you mail me a threatening letter. Then you send me a text message to my phone that says I'm not taking you seriously. So I am taking you seriously. And I really want you to listen to me. I, I, I have to tell you, I mean, this is important. I, I've been so stressed out. I have spoken to 10 or 12 people who are close friends of mine, telling them about this and basically picking their brains and asking them what I should do because I don't know your friend who is in jail. I don't, I, you, you mentioned a name. I don't even know his name. I never spoke to him. I don't know what he looks like. I've never met him. I, I'm sorry your friend's in jail, but I don't know what that has to do with me. Do, do, you, you, I, know, you know exactly what it has to do with. You, uh, you know exactly what it has to do with. Listen to me carefully. Listen to me. Listen to me. You, you, got, you, you just got to listen to me. You need to you ask gotta, your friend no. who this 
person looks like, what their name is, something, because I know there's a big reward out there, and if you need money for your friends, that's the way to get it. I mean, I'm asking you nicely. I don't know who he is. I am out of the loop. It is not me. If I can help, I would help. I mean, I... Just like I told, just like I told you, listen to me. Just like I told you that day, we know what we know that that your family had a problem up north. We know that that problem was taken care of about a year and a half, two years ago, and we know that Katie has been taken care of and has been taken care of. Now, now my brother, my brother in in jail, he we were in Broward together. He told me the whole thing, and he hasn't been taken care of. You know. I now, know. All, 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 we're, all, all that's being asked for is 5K. Five, five that's all we're asking for is for 5K. And he, I, he told me everything, and I know everything. I know who's involved. I know everything. And I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll get the 100K for myself. You know, I all I ask is to send the 5K. You, everybody knows what's going on. I don't, you know, you're saying everyone knows. I know I lost my ex-son-in-law. I did not have anything to do with it. That's why I said, ask him what that's, the that's what That's not, that's not, that's what not my, my brother Tato told me. He told me everything when we were in jail. He told me everything oh. and who was involved. I know everything. Well, I don't. That's the problem. I am telling you, it's not me. It's not me. I have had a year of aggravation, a year and a half of aggravation over this. My my daughter, my grandchildren, it is not me. And when I asked my friends, what do they think? They said, well, this person needs to get a description of you because of what you look like. Or It's not me. I don't know who caused this. It wasn't me. I mean, I, well, I don't know I'll why. Just, just, just just like that day when I talked to you, this is not going away. This is not going to go away. The Tato told me everything. He wasn't being taken care of. He needed the 5K. Sent 5K. That's all. That's all we were asking for. Yeah. Don't, don't do that. I don't know who Tato is. You don't understand. I, we know you don't know who Tato is, but you know who Katie is, and you know the contacts Katie has, and she has. Listen to me. Let's stop fucking around. Let's stop. <laughs> okay? You know who Katie is. And you know that Katie has somebody that knows Tato. And they and they took care of a problem for you people. That's just the bottom line. The bottom line is you know you know who the fuck Katie is. Look, I don't I I'm no more no more than Mr. No, I am not fucking I'm not fucking around with it. You know who Katie is. You know that they took care of Katie and her people. Nobody's taking care of Tato. You, I know you don't know who Tato is. No, I don't. But we know, we know who all of you are. And this ain't going away. You know what? So I can give you that if you, you want. You, then the 5K? Here's what you need to do. You need to go and... Don't, buy, don't tell me what to do. I know what to do and I'm doing it. You're looking for money. Get $100,000 or whatever the, the... What do you call it? Whatever the reward is. It isn't... Me, you have got the wrong person. That's why I said ask your friends. Your Jordana, Jordana Adelson. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Well, I know. We know who's involved in all this. Yes. This is not making any sense. I mean, if you want the money, you should get it from the police. They can give you a whole lot more than than, than you're asking me for money for someone. I I, I just I, I can't I can't do this. I have had too much stress and too much aggravation from this, and I don't know what you are talking about. I just don't know. I just don't know. Good. I think you should talk to Katie. Talk to talk to you people that are involved in this. You'll know. You know who it is. You know what's going on. That's why I'm... You can tell me... Senora Ellison, you can tell me all you fucking want, but I know you know. 
because I know because I heard I, when I was locked up in Broward with my with my brother, that's what he told me everything. Everything. He told me everything. Well, it's, I just it's, wanted to take know, care of him because because fucking Katie was being taken care of with her fucking puto. I just think I just think instead of asking me, you should get the money from the police. There's a a lot of money out there, and I know if you think you know who this is, then then go ahead and do it because I know it isn't me. I know it isn't me, and I can't take this kind of level of stress. I just can't. I know I didn't do anything. You talk to you talk to people. Tell, you talk to the right people. You talk to people. You make this five K come to me. That's all I need. Just do it and get it to me. Do it and get it to me. I'll pull you back. Okay, so here we have Donna making the call. Correct. And she refers the undercover to get the reward, to the police to get the reward, right? Yes. And then does she also report these incidents and what's been happening to law enforcement at that time? No, ma'am. Does anybody report these incidents and what's been happening and the, the stalking and harassment that's been going on? Does anybody report that to law enforcement? No, not at all. Do we have any evidence that Donna Adelson recorded that call with the undercover? Yes. Okay, let's go to CCC, please. <laughs> Charlie, how are you? Good, what's going on? Uh, good. Well, we just finished the dinner. We drove through Blackwell back to the hotel in Miami, and we just got back to the icon. So we just go for just a little walk along the marina, and then we're going to go upstairs. All right, I just, I just set the way I was having an uh, interview with you. Okay, I'll let you go right back. I will. I'll tell you that I did have that hand piece now. Okay, great. Okay, so, so what? Were there any questions? Any, any more nonsense from the patient? Uh, yeah, that's why, you know, those things always get aggravating, but I try not to let that bother me. Was it, uh, was it that? Oh, no, and I, you know, I did, um, I loaded that new app too. You will have to show it to you. I think it'll really be interesting. Okay, so you had how long yeah. how long the how long the talk did you have? Eight. Eight. Eight minutes? Yeah. You talked to the patient for eight minutes? Yeah. And they were nice? Well not really. No. Did they but did they, but did they, no. did, they no. did they did they give any threats or anything or um no. That's that's interesting. Yeah, I thought it was very interesting, but um, but I but I definitely want you to you know I'll, I'll tell you about the patient tomorrow, but I wanted to make sure I got that stuff to you. So if that's if that's too early for you, it kind of is. I mean, yeah, I, I, I can do it if you want. Well, it's not too early. Um, it's not too early. Yeah, I know. I could do it at nine, but that would be the latest. But then we have we have to get up to Boca and back to. Fort Lauderdale is tight time frame. That's the only reason. And then I know you will be thinking of what, what time do you have to be at Boca? Um, about 10. And then when do you come back to Fort Lauderdale? Uh, by, I think it's 12. I think we have to be back by 12 or 12.30. Okay, I was going to take the photo at 12.30. If you want, I can wait a little bit. So... You know what? I thought, okay, I thought you were leaving at 11, that was the problem. No, no, I was going to. I'll, I'll leave at 1231 and I'll leave for you. How's that sound? So you know what? I'll, yeah, I'll give you a call when we're leaving Boca. How's that? So it'll be definitely after 11. Uh, yeah. I do, actually. Yeah. But I'll, I'll call you from um, Boca.
What do you think? Were they real talkative or? Well, very. Very? Yeah. That, that's interesting too. Yeah, it is. So let me call you from there so that way I can um, make sure that the time is good for you and that's when I will, uh, I'll get to see you, okay? Okay, that's awesome. That's actually, yeah. that's actually all very, 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 very good for you. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, uh, that's, that's an excellent, excellent time. Yeah. Can you go enjoy your evening, say hello to June for me, and I don't I, I, think you'll call me to leave. Can I tell you something? Remember that lady I had to get back? Uh, Barbara? Yeah, okay. Not sure. Not, not to name names, but I had a right check for 22000 oh, Barbara's yeah. daughter. Yeah. yeah. The, the daughter, when she got on the phone, they, she was so to the point and yeah. the threat, and it said, yeah. if you don't buy Thursday, you know, if you don't buy Thursday, Return the check. I'm going to my attorney. We're filing a suit and we're going to court next year. Yeah. That's it. So, which way is it going to be? It was it was literally, she spoke for 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's. Anyway, so it's good that there's a the problem. Yeah. Um, okay. So, I'm sitting, I'm working. She's outside of, uh, outside of Johnny B's. Oh, go ahead. Go but go. I will do this. I will wait, take the boat out, even if my friends are here when you're here. What I'll do is I'll, I'll go sit in the car with you and we'll talk and go over the case as long as that has the models. Yeah, I mean, I don't the models show you. It's, it's, you not forget those hand pieces I can get. No, I know. I know. I've got them all packed up ready. I will right, see you great. tomorrow. Love you. Sounds good. Love you all. Bye. Take care. Bye. Okay, if we could go to the next day, May 7th, 2016. I'm sorry, that's the same day. Uh, we're going from 11, have I gone to the next day? Yes, okay, I'm sorry. DDD is what I'm trying to go to. Yeah. Do you think it's I like mad with it. I 
So do you think it's gonna make good it? <laughs> oh, I think it's I think it's fantastic. Yeah? Yeah, I think it's you think it'll sell a lot? I hope so. I dropped the mic. Oh. We're like out. Like that? Yeah, funny shit. Well, what can I hear? What can I hear? Go ahead and call me and I'll pay you on Monday. Okay. Is law enforcement commonly referred to as pigs? Yes, that's correct. And this was the last call that I included. Are there several more discussing how sure he is that it is in fact law enforcement after reviewing this call from the mo that the mother made? Yes. And in this call, he says it's fantastic. Is there a lot of enthusiastic talk about the, that realization? Yes, by him, yes. Okay. Could we show states 59, please? Oh, okay. Sorry, anywhere on the wire, did the defendant talk about the bump, the interactions with law enforcement, bumps, I should say, with anyone other than Catherine McBanawa or Donna Adelson? Um, possibly just his father. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what about um, Catherine McBanawa? Does she talk to anyone other than the defendant and Sigfredo Garcia about the bump or the bumps? No, that's the only two. Okay. And even after the, the hundred and thousand percent fantastic realization that this was just law enforcement fishing, does anybody go to law enforcement and report what had happened? No, they don't. No further questions. Cross examination. We meet again. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Your investigation revealed that Luis Rivera used burner phones in connection with this murder, right? Um, he used one during the murder, yes. That he threw away, right? Uh, we don't know what he did it with the actual phone, but he quit using it after the murder. Okay. Um, Sigfredo used burner phones as well, right? Uh, we're aware of him using one during the murder, too. And you heard about on the wire uh, that he was going to use a burner phone, right? He was going to go get a burner phone. He talked about getting rid of his phone after he used it. Right. Correct. And so did Catherine McDaniel, right? 
I don't remember her saying she was going to get rid of the phone, no. Do you recall Sigfredo Garcia telling Catherine Magbanoa on the wires, we need to go get new phones? They did go get new phones eventually after the, we interviewed them. They went to Walmart to buy two phones, right? Correct. After we had, I interviewed Sigfredo and she was attempted to be interviewed, correct. After Sigfredo Garcia was arrested, uh, Catherine McBanoa only used her, to your knowledge, her burner phone, right? No, she still used both phones, but she used them in very limited capacity. There's no evidence that Charlie Adelson ever used a burner phone, right? Not that we... Not that we were able to establish. During the wires, he always used the same phone, correct? The cell phone. Correct, with, with WhatsApp. Fair enough. There's no evidence that he ever went and bought a burner phone, right? I have not collected that evidence of a burner phone. We did have witnesses that we interviewed make reference to him having more than one phone, but we never were able to establish that. Never were able to corroborate that, right? No. And in fact, when he was arrested eight years after the murder, six years after everyone else was arrested, he had the same phone number, right? I believe he did. Okay. He used that same phone number for more than a decade, right? That's roughly correct, yes. Okay. Now, the day before Sigfredo Garcia's arrest, law enforcement went to his place of work and tried to interview him, right? That's correct, I did. Did you say you did? Yes, sir. And you believe that he lied during the interview, obviously, right? Yes, sir. Now, at the same time that Sigfredo Garcia was being interviewed, other law enforcement went to the place where they were living, him and Katie, uh, and knocked on the door and tried to interview her, right? That's correct. And she hid, right? She did. And you know she hid because you heard on the wires that she was making calls to a lot of people, right? That's correct. On all the people that she was <clears throat> calling on the wires, she never calls Charlie Adelson, right? When I, she's hiding. During, while she's hiding just during that hour long scenario I don't believe she did but I was in Miami I wasn't monitoring the wire then but you have put in all the wires here so you've reviewed them right yes long time ago and in reviewing the wires will you take my representation that she called three people and none of them were Charlie Adelson sure that sounds accurate and from the calls that you have reviewed and listened on the wires it was obvious to her in fact she said it on the calls that the police were outside her house right correct so if she testified before this jury that she had no idea the police were outside her house because they didn't announce themselves, that would be a lie, right? I believe at the beginning she might not have known. By the end of it, I believe she did know, yes. Okay. Fair to say at some point when she was hiding in the house, she knew that the FBI and the police, maybe not the FBI, but she knew that law enforcement were at her front door, right? Yes, I believe she did. The next day when Sigfred Sigfredo Garcia was arrested the next day, right? That's correct, the next evening. And when he was arrested, Catherine McBanawa left her townhouse and never with the kids and never came back, right? No, that's incorrect. That's incorrect? She 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 went back to live in that townhouse? No, she she didn't live in the house the night after we conducted the interview of Sigfredo. Okay. Uh, then she left? Yes. Okay, and she never came back? Correct. Fair enough. Law enforcement didn't know where she was for a while, right? Correct. She was keeping her phones off. We, we knew she was still in the state of Florida, but it would give us a brief indication. And then, yes, we didn't know where she was at all times, for sure, or exact location. You were worried that she had fled, right? I wasn't worried she fled the state. I knew she had turned her phone off and was eluding us. Did Charlie Adelson turn off his phone after the arrest? No, he just stopped using it for quite a significant period. Um, quit using it regularly, I should say. Aren't there a lot of calls after the arrest between Charlie Adelson on his phone? Of insignificance, just like work calls and things like that. Fair enough. Right. But I, I want to make sure the jury understands 
he continued to use his phone, right? He did in a different capacity, in my opinion. But he continued to use his phone, Special Agent, right? Yes, sir, he did. He didn't get a new phone? Not that we know of. He didn't change his number? Correct. He went to work? Correct. He didn't flee his house? Not that we know of, no. Well, when you arrested him six years later, was he in the same house? He was that night, yes. Okay. You say that night. Or that I mean, morning. Had he been living in that house pretty much continually for the next six years? I'm aware that he had a couple of different houses. Um, I'm not sure if he... I don't know if he stayed in that house all the time or not because I didn't keep tabs on him every day. Okay, fair enough. But when you went to arrest him, you knew where to go, right? We found him there, yes. And you knew where to go because that was his main residence, right? Correct. It was still his residence of and that some had, record. that had been his residence for the entire time since 2014, correct? I'm not saying he didn't have other residences, but that was the place where he primarily lived, correct? He still owned the house, I believe, on his driver's license. He had a different address. He changed it. Okay. Now, it was made public, the arrest of uh, Rivera and Sigfredo in May 2015, correct? Uh, 2016, correct? Correct, right after, his, uh, right after his arrest, correct. And Charlie Adelson didn't flee? Not that I know of. Well, you didn't have to go on a manhunt for him, right? Not years later. We didn't look for him immediately right then. Uh, there were news reports, 2020 primetime specials in September 2016. He didn't flee. Correct, not that I'm aware of. There was a probable cause affidavit leaked to the media in September 2016. Are you aware of that? I am aware of it, yes. And that probable cause affidavit was over 20 pages long? I don't recall if that sounds right. It was very detailed? It was. Much of the evidence that came in this courtroom in the last week was in that report, right? That's correct. And it was against Charlie Adelson, right? Some of it was, yes. And when that was released, he didn't flee, right? Not that I'm aware of. Catherine McBanderwell was arrested in October 2016, right? Correct. He didn't flee, right? Not that I'm aware of, no. Sigfredo Garcia was convicted at trial in 2019. Charlie Adelson didn't flee, right? That's correct. The state announced its intention to retry Catherine McBanerwa after the jury hung in 2019. Again, he didn't flee, right? Not that I'm aware of. And in the months leading up to her trial, he didn't flee, correct? Correct. Now, he did travel out of the country many times, right? I believe so, yes. And he traveled to some places where extradition is, at least we could say, difficult. Could be. Did he? Special Agent, we were talking about the places he went to where extradition was tough. He always came back, right? Yes. Now, during the course of your investigation, did you review uh, text messages between Katie and Charlie? Yes. And did you learn that Katie wanted a longer, deeper relationship with Charlie as time went on? 
I don't know if I recall that. There was a lot of back and forth. Fair enough. Did you learn that Charlie didn't feel the same way? Um, I don't know if I recall that either. Did you see text messages where he said, I don't want to get married, I don't want two kids, to that effect? Possibly. That I mean, it, it's probably in there somewhere. Um, there was a lot of back and forth between him and other females that I could be getting confused. Do you recall him talking to a friend in text messages, talking about a trip he was going to take with Katie in the early, in the early to mid-summer before the murder? where he told his friend it's the goodbye tour? Uh, that sounds familiar. Did you learn that Katie and Charlie broke up within weeks after the murder? No. Uh, my understanding was possibly right around the time of the murder. I'm not sure the exact timing of it, though. Fair enough. Now, we listened to a lot of calls. Katie lies to Charlie when she told him that she would call the undercover, right? Correct. She lied to Charlie when she told him that she called the undercover and there was no answer. Correct. She lied to the un she lied to Charlie when she told him that the undercover number was a non-working number, right? Correct. Non-working number would be like in the old days where it goes beep, right? That's my understanding. She lied to Charlie when she said she called the undercover and got an answering machine. When she called the undercover. Correct. She, she was not the one to make the call. Correct. She lied to Charlie when she said she left a threatening message. She left a threatening message. Correct. On the undercover's voicemail. Correct. By the way, Secreto Garcia may have called the voicemail. But he didn't leave any message, right? No, that's correct. He did not. He didn't leave a threatening last message. No. Another lie by Char by Kate by Katie to Charlie, correct? Correct. Or by Sigfredo, one of the two. After her conviction, Catherine McBanawa was sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole, right? Correct. And about a month after she was sentenced she decided she wanted to cooperate. I don't know the timing of it. Fair enough. At some point after her sentencing, she wanted to cooperate, right? Correct. And she met with law enforcement uh, at least twice. You were there two times. That's correct. And you met for hours. Um, I wouldn't... The first time, I think, was probably less than an hour, around an hour. The second time I met with her was probably less than an hour. If I told you the first time was two hours and 12 minutes, would you believe me? That's what it shows us, us sitting in the room with her for two hours and 12 minutes? That's what the notes say. Okay. If that's what the video shows, then... Fair enough. Nonetheless, you met with her twice. Okay. She was placed under oath. Yes. And we'll start with the first meeting. You believe she continued to lie? Correct. You even... Tried to stop the interview the first time, correct? I didn't stop the interview. I tried to relay to her that, yeah, it was in her best interest to tell the truth. You didn't believe her? I didn't believe a lot of the... What is the objection? Say that one more time. Speculation. Can't give opinions about other witnesses. Sustained. Were you frustrated? Somewhat. Of, of some certain things I was, yes. Was she telling you things? We'll go to your second interview of her. Were you frustrated in the second interview as well? Yes, I was. You didn't believe she was being... I'll withdraw. During her second interview, at one point, you said to her, what you are telling us just doesn't make sense. Do you recall telling her that? That sounds about right. And this wasn't her first trial when she testified, right? I mean, I know you didn't believe her then, but this was during her proffer. Correct. Proffers, right? Yes. This was just well, less, than a, less than a year ago, right? I don't remember the date, but that sounds right. 
out. The bump was an extortion, right? It was it was a attempt at extortion, correct, somewhat. But what law enforcement didn't know is that an extortion had already happened, right? Don't believe there was an extortion prior. What law enforcement didn't understand is that the things said on the recording related to the fact that there had already been an earlier extortion. I disagree. Do you recall on the recordings repeatedly Charlie Adelson is talking about the characteristics of the person who did the bump? Yes. He's saying things like he used his phone. He's not disguising himself. He's not giving 48 hours. He's not making a threat. Do you recall that? I do. Did it seem like he was comparing it to something else? To me? Yeah. It seemed like he was comparing it to a TV show. Fair enough. Because you don't know what happened on July 18th, 2014, right? July 18th, 2014? You don't know what happened on the evening of July 18th, 2014 in Charlie Edelson's house, right? Oh, you're referring to the day of the murder. I know what happened on that day, but not that evening, no. You don't know what happened in his house that night, right? Correct. <clears throat> During the bump, Charlie's way of calming his mom down, a co-conspirator, right? You consider her a co-conspirator. I do, yes. Charlie's way of calming down his mom, a co-conspirator, was telling her that he thought it was the police, right? That was one way, yes. So let me get this straight. Two people who have just done a murder prefer the bump to be a policeman rather than another co-conspirator or another bad guy. Correct. What could this note be? The only people who actually spoke to the undercover was Charlie Adelson and Donna Adelson, correct? Correct. And when they spoke to the undercover, they used their phones. Let me be more let me be more precise. Okay. When Charlie Adelson spoke to the undercover, he used his cell phone. He used yes, and he blocked his number when he called, yes. He star sixty seven did. Correct. He used his cell phone, though, correct? I believe he did. I can't remember the exact dial digits that it came from. Fair enough. Now, the calls that you put in, you can read the words, but... There's some guessing as to the meaning, correct? Of what they're talking about? It's, it, it could be, yes. And Dolce Vita, in particular, you can't hear a lot of what Katie McBana was saying, correct? It's hard to hear a lot of it, yes. There's about 100 unintelligibles when she is speaking, correct? Correct. And there's a missing chunk of that meeting before the recording even starts, right? Correct. They got in the vehicle first and before they went into the restaurant. And let's talk about them getting in that vehicle. So before they get to Dolce Vita, Charlie Adelson and Katie McBana will meet in a car. He pulls up and she comes out of her office and gets in the car, yes. How long are they in that car for? 
it's an approximation around 10, 15 minutes. I think you're right. And you don't know what was said in that car, right? No. Now, during this bump, you all are listening on the wires, right? Correct. And no one's paying the money. Correct. And part of what you're hearing is that the threats aren't big enough. No, I disagree with that. Okay. Uh, let me ask it this way. Okay. It starts with a bump on the street, right? Right. And, and we watched it. The gentleman who's playing Aladdin King, he's a little bit polite. Can we say that? Correct. He's the nicest Latin king I've ever seen in my life. Correct. There's reasons. Uh, the next event that happens is, well, there's a bunch of events, but let me tell you the next progression. Is a letter is, devel is delivered to Donna and Harvey Adelson's apartment. Correct. So now you've gone from the street to the apartment, right? That's correct. And the letter is a little more threatening. A little bit. And still no one pays. Correct. And then there's a couple calls to the office. There's a call to the office. Correct. Still no one pays. Correct. And then there's a text message that comes at like two or three in the morning to Donna Adelson, right? Yes. And the timing is kind of important, right? Um, it could be. It be taken that way. And the text message is definitely more threatening. Yes. Going to the wires very briefly. Don't worry, I'm not going to go over them all with you. Thank you. Do you recall some wires around April 26 where Katie and Sigfredo are fighting? Of 16, yes. And some wires that were not played in court. But do you recall that they were fighting about something completely different than this case? Could have been. They were fighting about a, a girl that Sigfredo found, I'm sorry, that Katie found on Sigfredo's cell phone. Sounds vaguely familiar. With a tattoo. I don't remember that part. Okay. And do you recall that the day before, or two days before, the letter, law enforcement sends the letter to Donna and Harvey Adelson that Katie actually leaves the house. She leaves him. I do recall her leaving the house at some point. I don't remember the timing, though. And the call that Ms. Kappelman played for you, where they're fighting... Sigfredo in the beginning of the call thinks that she's talking about like he says you need to make an appointment to see your son recall that yes and it's because she has just left the house the day before sounds correct she's yes. left him correct and she says to him in the text message listen I got to talk to you about something else yes you recall that I do and you recall that Charlie Adelson finds out that these two have are having problems and he freaks out. I don't remember that. I remember him t 
talking to her about their separation and trying to encourage her. And he's encouraging her to get back together with him, right? I do remember that, yes. By the way, uh, Ms. Kappelman asked you after the last bump text, that was received in the early morning by Donna Adelson. She asked you if anyone actually told the undercover, go to the police and collect your reward. You remember her asking you that question? I thought that was before that text message. Well, let's just make this clear, whether it's okay. before or after. Okay. Isn't it true that that's precisely what Miss Adelson, Donna Adelson, told the undercover? If you have information, go to the police. She did at that point. That's correct. Right? That's what she said. On that call. Now, she didn't want to go to the police. She never went to the police, right? Correct. Charlie never went to the police. No. And you don't know why. You guess why, but you don't know why. There, there's reasonable belief, yes. But you don't know why he didn't go to the police can't read his mind though. No. May I have one moment, Your Honor? Looking at those text messages, by the way, after the night of July 18th, do you see a decrease in text messages initially? So if you're looking at July to September between Charlie Adelson and Catherine McVanua. A decrease in text messages, you're talking about 2014? Yeah, initially. I'd have to go back and look. I don't recall. Do you see that the relationship, though, as time goes on, gets stronger? Not boyfriend-girlfriend, but does definitely get stronger. I don't recall. Okay. Now, I want to just make sure that something was clear yesterday because I think it was a little confusing. And I, I don't think it was on purpose, but I want to make sure that the facts are clear. Sure. <clears throat> After Professor Markell was murdered, Wendy Adelson gave complete access to the Markells. Isn't that true? Until the email was sent. I don't know about complete access, but I believe... I know at, when that email was sent, there were things that were cut off. Fair enough. But before the email was sent, there was a different type of access. There was better access. I would, okay. I could say that. Do you recall, and you know what, let me set it up first. It might take a second, Your Honor. Go ahead. Especially with the It's SX 130. SS? It's your exhibit 130. One of the wires. Call 989.
recall the Dave call? Which one? The first call, I think, that was played yesterday. It was a call about Charlie and Donna's <laughs> affection for Dave. Sure. I remember, I remember several of them. But And do you recall that Ms. Kappelman paid, played 19 minutes and 11 seconds of that call? And then I, she stopped it. I don't recall how much or when, but as possible, yes. Well, let, let me play when it was stopped. Okay. If I just play it, is it going to go on this thing? And while we while we work on this, can we do a test before I ask a question? Go ahead. But make money. They already have their kids. Um, okay. Did it work in the headphones? No. All right. Well, I think we can. I think we can hear it. Pretty loud. Let's see if we can hear it. I'm going to play you at 20 minutes and 20 Looking seconds. Looking to make a whole business or want to make money. They already have their kids. I'm not looking to make a whole She well, owes it to those kids. Yeah. But she, she has an opportunity that she would throw in the garbage and then these no. kids... And believe me, that's it. They're not going to have another no. dad. No. Well, and it, was, it was a tragedy. Listen, it was. A tra they had a dad. It was a tragedy. What happened? Yeah. Well, well what I'm, what I'm here's telling you. So there, 20 minutes and 25 seconds into the call, about two minutes after Mr. Miss Kappelman stopped it, Charlie Adelson says it's a tragedy what happened to their dad. Right? Yes, he did. And that was in response to his mom saying Dave would be a great dad, right? Correct. And Charlie says they already had a dad, and it was a tragedy what happened to him. He did. When Charlie Adelson said that on this call, that was stopped before this jury. When he said that on that call, that's before the bump. I believe it was, yes. That's 21 months after the murder. Correct. He had no idea whatsoever that he was being recorded. I would probably disagree with that. But the other stuff, remember yesterday she brought in other stuff about Dave and she asked you those same questions. She said this is before the bump. Your caller asking you that? Yeah, it's before the bump. And she said it was almost two years after the murder. Correct. I'll leave it at that, Agent. No further questions. Redirect examination. Point being, two years after the murder, they're still screwing around in Wendy's love life. Is That's that correct. what happened? That is correct. All right. A couple other things. The You were asked about... Mr. Rashbaum referred to it as the goodbye tour. I recall it as the farewell tour, but you know what? We're talking about the breakup trip between Correct. Catherine Magvanoa and this defendant. Early July, I believe. Okay. Is it your recollection that that was the end of their, that actually was the end of their relationship, or is there evidence that they continued seeing each other for some time after that? Um, I believe there was a little bit of, um, I believe there was some seeing after that. Okay, would the text messages refresh your recollection on that they issue? Would. Okay. They would. It's been a while. I tab these for you to take a look and see if the blue tabs refresh your
Does that refresh your recollection? Yes. So when does it appear that Catherine Magbano and the defendant broke up? It appears like um, in August, around August 25th. Around August 25th of 2014? 2014. All right. And did they continue to stay in contact to varying degrees throughout the time from their breakup to, to the arrest in this yes, case? Yes, they did. Did you have an opportunity during your investigation to conduct any surveillance on Catherine Magbanoa and Sigfredo Garcia? Yes, we did. All right. And did you... Well, let me ask you if you've ever worked on or heard of a case where an extortionist commits their crimes wearing a fake Abe Lincoln beard and a floppy hat. No, I'm not. Did you ever observe Catherine Magbanoa or Sigfredo Garcia dressed like that? No, I didn't. No further questions. You may step down, Agent. Please call your next witness, State. Please call your next witness. Your Honor, at this time, the State rests. Members of the jury, we're going to take a break at this point. The bailiff will escort you back into the jury room. Defense have any motions to raise at this point? We do, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor, we renew all previous motions and objections for the record, and we would move for judgment of acquittal. As to which charge or charges? All three, Your Honor. As to the first count, principle to first degree murder, um, the evidence presented reflects no contact between Mr. Adelson or any members of the Adelson family, no substantive contact, and uh, the shooters. Um, the only direct evidence of Mr. Adelson's involvement came from Catherine Magdalena. She testified that Mr. Adelson, I believe at Halloween, asked her to rough up Professor Markell, and that at some point a piece of paper was placed in an envelope in her diaper bag that she never read. She testified she didn't know about the trips to Tallahassee, and she didn't even know that Professor Markell had been shot as of July 18th. So I don't believe that there's sufficient evidence to go to the jury on the, the element of whether Mr. Adelson did or said anything to cause or assist another to commit the actual murder. Um, on the conspiracy to commit murder, Your Honor, again, there's no evidence of any agreement or any contact between the Adelsons and the shooters. The evidence from Mr. Rivera is that Katie Magbanawa was the mastermind, and at most, again, as I, as I said earlier, Ms. Magbanawa's testimony reflects really that there was this uh, request in October to rough up Professor Markell. And on the solicitation point, Your Honor, make the rest of the same argument. Response? One correction on that recitation of facts, Your Honor. Catherine Magbanawa testified or clarified her testimony that she didn't know the person who was shot was named Dan Markell, but she did know that she was solicited by and conspired with this defendant to commit the murder of Wendy Adelson, his sister's ex-husband, which was done. And applying the standard which the court must at this point, which is the evidence must be viewed in the light most favorable to the state, the motion for judgment of acquittal is going to be denied. As to all prior motions and objections that the defense is once again raising, 
That is noted for the record. Does the defense need a brief break to discuss its case before we bring back in the jurors? Yes, we will, Your Honor. All right. We'll take a 10-minute break. Actually, we'll make it a 13-minute break. <laughs> we'll get started again at 3.30. I was going to ask for 20.
Yes, sir. <laughs> Go ahead. Everyone can be seated. And then from there, we'll address the defense's case. We discuss the timing of the defense's case before we bring back in the jurors. Are you planning to call any witnesses at all? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And would this include the defendant or other witnesses first? It will include at least one other witness first. Very well. Please call your, well, we'll bring in the jurors and you may call your first witness from there. Do you wish me to call it with the defendant at this point? Uh, I think I'd, I'd rather wait till after the first witness. All right. Keep, keep them guessing to the very end. Please bring in the jurors. Just wait in the gallery for right now. You'll
Everyone can be seated. Members of the jury, now that the state has rested its case, the defendant is going to have his opportunity to put on his case as well. Mr. Rauschbaum, you may call your first witness. Your Honor, the defense calls Kristen Adamson. I know it's unfamiliar, but all, all the way up here, Ms. Adamson, please raise your right hand. If you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth. You may take your seat. Good afternoon, Ms. Adamson. Good afternoon. Would you please introduce yourself to the jury? I am Kristen Adamson, and um, I'm attorney at law. I was Wendy Adelson's lawyer in her dissolution of marriage action. Where did you attend law school? I attended law school at Florida State University. I graduated in 1988. Are you a member in good standing of the Florida Bar? I am. Do you specialize in any areas of practice? I do. I specialize in marital and family law. I'm board certified since 1994, I think, in uh, marital and family law by the United States, mm -hmm. by the Florida State Supreme Court. I also um, am a fellow in the American Academy of Matrimonial Lawyers, former president of the Florida chapter. I'm a fellow in the International Academy of Family Law Lawyers. I have been named a Florida super lawyer in family law and um, best lawyers in America since 2008, specifically Tallahassee best family law lawyer in 2012 and 2021. You mentioned earlier that you are a board certified lawyer. What does that mean exactly? To be board certified, um, the Florida Supreme Court promulgates a list of criteria that you have to have to become board certified in a specialty area and you have to pass a test, both written and oral, and a peer review by your peers and um, the court as well. Um, and you have to pass all three of those things in order to become board certified. You mentioned in your introduction that you were Wendy Adelson's attorney in her divorce proceedings against Professor Markell. When, you were, when were you retained? I was retained, I think, approximately um, October of 2012. Did there come a time during your representation of Wendy Adelson that you filed a motion to allow her to relocate to South Florida? I did. I filed that motion um, almost immediately after I was retained. I filed an amended petition for dissolution of marriage to request that she be allowed to relocate and a temporary um, motion that she be allowed to relocate. So that would have been in 2012. Is there anything wrong with asking the court for permission to relocate? No, it's a, um, especially in Tallahassee because it is kind of a transitory community with the college and everything. It's fairly common for when people get divorced for one party to want to relocate somewhere else, either back where their family is or they graduate from school and they want to move to someplace else because of a job or they remarry. Um, we do file these relocation requests fairly often. In Leon County, in your experience, how often are such motions granted? So that is the kicker. <laughs> um, even though we file them, I've been, I have now been practicing 35 years, and I think I've only actually won one that was allowed to relocate. They're very hard to do, and you have to have pretty serious um, circumstances that um, require the relocation. Did you share that statistic with Ms. Adelson? I did. I thought she had a shot at it um, <clears throat> because of all the facts surrounding her case, but I did tell her that it's very unlikely that we will win this, um, but I did tell her that if you do plan to relocate or want to relocate, you need to do it now in this initial proceeding and not wait until everything's over and then ask. So we, we made that tactical decision to at least attempt to relocate. And what was her reaction to that? She wanted to be able to try, so we did. We filed the, um, the motion for relocation. Was that motion ever heard by the court presiding over her divorce? Yes, it was. Um, we filed it um, and we set it for hearing for any number of reasons. The hearings kept getting 
the legal proceedings take a long time sometimes and things get complicated. It kept getting pushed off, but ultimately, I think it was around June of 2013 that we had a hearing about that relocation issue. And, and what was the court's ruling? The court said no, she could not go. What was Wendy Adelson's reaction to the court's ruling? Um, she was pretty. Ms. Adamson, you may testify to what you recall about your what you observed from your client, but not to her actual words. So she was pretty calm about the whole thing. Um, she seemed to understand that it was not a given that it would happen. That it's usually a long shot, um, and. I spoke with her afterwards, right after the proceeding, and then I spoke with her several times afterwards to sort of decompress, and she she seemed fine about it. She understood. Okay. There's Pretty been, resigned to the idea of it. Okay. There's been some testimony in this case that in the wake of that denial, the Adelson family was considering offering Professor Markell a certain sum of money, a million dollars, to allow Wendy Adelson and the boys to relocate to South Florida. Are you aware of that offer? No. Okay. In your experience, have you ever heard of one spouse making a monetary offer to another spouse to allow for things like relocation? Objection relevance. Your Honor, the, the state has... So that's a fairly common occurrence for relocations, and I actually just had one a couple of weeks ago where that's exactly what happened, was the the husband of, a, the new husband of a woman who wanted to relocate basically paid my client to allow um, her to be able to relocate. I've also had people, um, it shouldn't be the case that money and children are connected, and we've tried hard to not have that happen, but it does happen sometimes. I also often have one say, if you allow us to relocate, you never have to pay child support. Um, all kinds of those kinds of money things do get offered, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Is there anything illegal about one spouse making an offer to another spouse? To, to, not to as far as I know. Okay. At some point, was Professor Markell and Ms. Adelson's divorce case mediated? We mediated it twice. We mediated it once before the um, hearing on the parenting, and that mediation was just about the, the relocation and the ability to go, and we were not successful in mediating that, so we had the hearing. Then we mediated it again in July of 2013, and that was also... Um, an impasse. It was sometime in the um, around July 20s, 21 maybe, something like that. But then we settled the case a week later because that happens sometimes. And I tell my clients this all the time. Just because we haven't settled it at mediation doesn't mean it's over. We continued um, to have discussions and conversations during that last week until we finally settled the case. Okay, so there was no trial. There was no trial. There was a marital settlement agreement entered. Do you recall the date? It was the end of July 2020, um, uh, 2013, right? 2013, yeah. It's a long time ago, sorry. Without getting into words spoken, what was your impression of Wendy Adelson's reaction to the settlement of the divorce case? She was very relieved. Most people are when you settle their cases. Did you continue to, to represent Wendy into 2014? I did. Do you recall that in February of 2014, Professor Markell filed a motion seeking to sanction Wendy and you? He did. Do you recall what Professor Markell was claiming, the substance of that motion? The, the substance of that motion was in response to a motion that I had filed in October of 2013 when he did not pay her or me um, the money that he was supposed to pay according to our marital settlement agreement, he only paid part of it, and he didn't pay the rest of it, and he didn't pay me. And this was just about the financial part. It had nothing to do with the children. So I filed a motion to enforce. It took him several. Um, his The day that I filed that motion to enforce, his lawyer that he had at that time withdrew, and he had and he, and it, 
obtained a new lawyer. So um, that new lawyer and I talked about these issues for quite a while, and ultimately what happened was he filed, M Mr. Markell filed this response, um, and he claimed that Wendy and I had committed fraud in obtaining that marital settlement agreement by hiding an asset. Do you recall what relief he was seeking? Um, several things he was seeking. He was seeking, he was basically saying that um, <clears throat> he shouldn't have to pay Wendy because she breached the contract and one good breach deserves another, I guess, is what his theory was. And second, that um, both Wendy and I should be disbarred. Okay. Were you concerned about the substance of Professor Markell's allegations in that motion? No. Sorry. Sustained. Disregard the last comment from the witness. You may move on. What was your view about the likelihood of success in your experience of that motion and of getting disbarred and of Wendy Adelson being disbarred as a result of that motion? Objection, relevance. Your Honor. Approach. <laughs> Ms. Adamson, you may communicate, or I'm sorry, you may testify as to what you communicated to your client concerning this motion. Concerning this motion, I basically told um, my client that I wasn't concerned about the legal ramifications of this, either regarding the um, claim of the fraud because I know we had covered that really well in our discovery process and we had litigated it and I was not concerned about that. I was not concerned about um, so much so that I was not concerned at all about any ethical issues that I might have had um, with the bar and or Ms. Um, Adelson either. I was not concerned. Do you recall that Professor Markell or his attorney on his behalf filed another motion in March of 2014? 
So in March of 2014, at, well after the first motion that was just about the property, he filed a motion um, that um, made some additional claims for why he shouldn't have to abide by the payment. And these claims started talking about the children. And he made, and I don't remember all of the claims, but they were basically the, sus the substance was that um, he should be allowed more electronic communication with his children that he was getting, and um, that um, Ms. Adelson's mother should have supervised visitation only with her grandchildren because of um, statements that he thought that she might be making to the children. Did you communicate your thoughts on this motion to Ms. Adelson? Yes, I did. And what were those thoughts? So I told her as far as the electronic communication, I wouldn't worry about that too much because we already had a marital settlement agreement that outlined everybody's rights and obligations, and there had been no real changes on that. So, And the judge had actually already ruled on that kind of issue in 2013 at one of our hearings. We had a couple of hearings. So I wasn't really worried about that because they were kind of already set out what everyone should be doing, and I didn't see that there had been any changes that would make the court make any changes to that agreement. And then as far as the um, grandmother, I also um, told her that um, these kinds of allegations, while they're not nice or fun, um, they're pretty run of the mill. And lots of people after they get divorced don't get along very well. And um, their extended families don't get along that well. But I wouldn't think that the judge would order supervised visitation based on these kinds of allegations, because supervised visitation is for pretty extreme cases. For example, I've had people um, who have maybe multiple DUIs and shouldn't be allowed to be with children because they're, it's an unsafe situation. Or I have um, had people who were abusive and they can't be with the children, so they have to be supervised. Um, basically what happens when people aren't talking nice, and I didn't know if it was actually true or not, but it was an allegation he made. Um, aren't talking nice about it, what we try to do is just have conversations w with the judge, and the judge might say, okay, everybody, be nice, and that's it. There's, I wasn't worried about that issue. Okay. Did there come a time in, this, in, in the divorce and post-divorce proceedings when you filed a motion to withdraw? I did. Do you recall when that was? Right. So we had those first two motions. They were odd. And by first two motions, just to The ones it. that we just talked about. We had the first motion um, where he said it was okay for him to breach because she breached. And then we had the next one about the kids and all of that. And then he filed a memorandum. I believe it was in May or June. I think May. I think May of 2014. And it was a long, detailed memorandum of law that had a lot more facts in it. And I realized at that point in time that I was probably going to have to be a witness in this case because of what he was saying about me in the memorandum and the motions. And I can't be a witness and a lawyer in the same case by the, um, the Florida ethical rules. So I withdrew because I knew I would have to take a different role. You spoke about a lot more facts in this memorandum. Did the view of the motions that you conveyed to Wendy Adelson change as a result of the memorandum, other than the fact that you had to withdraw? No, it was just kind of reinstating all of the same kinds of things, but it was a lot more um, vehemently with a little bit different language. It kept upping the ante, and that's when I realized this was not going to be something that we were going to be able to probably resolve without a court hearing, because I had been trying to do that with his lawyer. Um, so I was going to have to I was going to have to do that. So I moved to withdraw and I called another lawyer and asked him if he would please step in in my place. Okay. Did you did you seek to withdraw because you felt you did something wrong? No, it was only because I knew I was going to have to testify in the case and I and that was the only reason. And you mentioned you contacted another lawyer. Did Wendy Adelson ultimately retain that other lawyer? She did. And do you recall when she did that? I know that he filed a notice that I filed a motion to withdraw. And then um, the court granted my order 
within a few days of that. And um, I believe he, um, which was in end of May-ish, I think. And then he came in in the first part of June, I believe. Okay, so days before what has been talked about in this case is the first attempt, Ms. Adelson retained a new attorney to represent her in the ongoing proceedings with Professor Markell? She did. Okay. Um, one additional question, Your Honor. Can I have a moment? Take your time. And it is actually on the line. Okay. Whether those telephone calls related to a motion to compel and a notice of hearing filed by Professor Mantel's attorney on his behalf. Um, and again, the testimony relates to calls on the morning of May 2nd. Can you tell the jury, you showing me a portion of State's Exhibit 56? Okay. This is the notice of hearing that was filed. May 2nd, 2014. Can you tell the jury what time? Um, it looks like it was filed at 3.14.48. They've got the seconds on there. Uh, PM. Okay. And the motion to compel? What time is this filed? Uh, 3.14.48 PM as well. It's p.m., so it's afternoon. Yeah. Cross-examination. to publish defenses, demonstrative, what number is this? I think it's Okay, so on May 2nd, 2014, I know you're not familiar with this exhibit, but if these calls occurred at, we're gonna have some clicking here, clicking assistance. How many advanced degrees does it take to change a light bulb? <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank You were asked about a filing or two filings that were made on May 2nd. Uh, if the phone calls in question occurred in 
well into the afternoon hours it would have been after that filing would you agree with that I have no idea I think you Sorry. do because I think you were shown the documents and asked about the time of the filings I know about the filings yes. okay so if the calls occurred in the late into the late afternoon we have it now 315 349 354 all of those times 356 439 455 would have been after those filings that would, you agree that would with appear that? to be correct okay thank you and were you familiar with dr. Um, Professor Markell's practice of emailing Wendy prior to making these filings and saying basically laying out the whole thing in an email this is what I'm gonna do if you don't comply I'm gonna make this filing were you privy to those emails sometimes stay Miss Kappelman if you can go through that with the witness I'm sorry what did you say your honor foundation Okay, were you privy to emails from Professor Markell to your client, Wendy Adelson, previewing the filings before he made them? Same objection, Your Honor. Overruled. She's trying to lay the foundation now. I'm aware of, of it, that he did that on occasion. Okay, yes. and do you know whether he did that in reference to the May 2nd filing? I have no idea. All right. And the case you talked about where you recently had somebody buy out their former spouse's rights to their children basically relocate for money relocation for hire um, how much money did that person how much money was exchanged for that relocation that was not a million dollars but <laughs> but it was um, it was basically um, when we did all of the child support and everything that would have been paid it turns out to be somewhere probably around 200,000 okay. if what was alleged in Professor Markell's motion about Wendy having lied and hidden assets and all that if those if she had taken those actions that could have had serious consequences to her personally as well as her her law license would you agree with that yes you described I'm sure you were referring to different parts of the case but you referred to the case as run-of-the-mill and you referred to it as odd was this a particularly contentious or memorable case for you or was it run-of-the-mill so those are two separate statements I think I think that the, the quibbling about the children was run-of-the-mill I think the case was odd okay how much I guess in general would you agree that divorces come with high emotions yes and do clients always take your advice no do clients always chill out when you tell them this is nothing to worry about no did you have any contact with Donna Adelson the mother of Wendy Adelson in reference to Don uh, Wendy's divorce the only time I had any communication with Wendy's mother was at the relocation hearing that we had in um, June of um, 2013. Did Donna testify at the relocation hearing? She did not. All right. So is it fair to say your contact with her was almost nothing? Yes. She and her husband were at the hearing and my contact with them was minimal all right and so are have you had an opportunity to review Donna Adelson's emails to Wendy in reference to this divorce and in particular your representation I have not no further questions redirect examination Very brief.
the morning of May 7th. This is called the morning of May 7th. I do. So 12 a.m. is morning, 12 p.m. is noon, right? <laughs> it's always one of those ones that my husband always says we should use military time. So I think it's 12 a.m. means morning, right? Right after, yeah, okay. How okay. about 9, 10 in the morning? Yes. 9, in the morning? Yes. So on? They, yes. <clears throat> and you were asked by Ms. Kaplan if when he had done the things that Professor Markell accused her of, failing to disclose assets and such, whether that would have been a serious matter, correct? Yes. Were you aware of Wendy Adelson failed to disclose assets? In the context of the divorce proceeding, no, she she didn't, and in particular, the particular asset that he was talking about, um, it was a non-marital asset of hers, and it was a, um, her parents had given to her, and she basically took it back. But we showed him the whole paper trail of it, and his argument was kind of an esoteric legal argument about why it should be his and part of the marital estate. So it was kind of weird and kind of, when I say the case was odd, what I mean it's odd for the opposing party to make claims against me to, to want me disbarred as well as his wife. So that was what was odd about the case and I remember it because that doesn't happen <laughs> in my cases. But um, that was um, the arguments that he was making and um, we several times it was one specific um, retirement account. So several times we gave him the documents that he requested. It just never was what he wanted. Okay, no further questions, John. You may step down. Thank you. If the attorneys can approach. We'll escort you back to the jury room, and then we'll resume with the defense's case. Everyone but the defendant can be seated at this time. Mr. Adelson, please raise your right hand, sir. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth? Yes, Your Honor. You can lower your hand. Mr. Adelson, do you understand that you have the ability to testify on your own behalf? Yes, Your Honor. Do you also understand that if you choose not to testify, your silence cannot be held against you? Yes, Your Honor. Have you had an adequate opportunity to discuss with your counsel whether you wish to testify? Yes, Your Honor. Have you also been able to discuss with your counsel how this decision would fit into your theory of defense and also the strategy that you wish to present before the jury? Yes, Your Honor. Have you made a decision concerning whether you wish to testify? Yes, Your Honor. What is that decision? I will testify. Are you firm in this decision? Yes. Do you need any additional time to discuss with your attorneys whether you wish to remain silent? No, Your Honor. Do you understand in testifying you will be cross-examined 
by one of the prosecutors. Yes, Your Honor. Do you also understand as well that your credibility will be placed before the jury as it relates to the testimony that will come out? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any questions concerning that particular issue that you wish to discuss with counsel or raise before the court? No, Your Honor. Mr. Rauschbaum, do you wish there to be any further inquiry concerning this matter? No, Your Honor. You may be seated. Your Honor, may I be heard? It's the state's request that we either go late tonight, plan to go late tonight, or begin this examination tomorrow so that the examination of the witness can be... Unfettered? Yes, sir. Mr. Rauschbaum? May we approach, Your Honor? You may. Please bring in the jurors. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, I will not advise the jurors that he's taking a stand, but we'll just let them know they're going home early for the evening. Everyone can be seated. Members of the jury, after consulting with the attorneys, we are actually going to end a little bit early this evening. 
So you'll get to go home in just a few minutes. Once again, I'm going to give you the same instruction. Don't discuss the case with each other or anyone else. Don't seek out any media coverage. Don't read anything or watch anything concerning this case. We will resume with the defense's case tomorrow morning. Please report at 8.30, and we will try to get started at the normal time of 8.45. Enjoy your early night off. Thank you. Thank you. Seated. Do the parties have anything additional to raise before we go into recess for the evening? Nothing from the state. All right, Mr. Rauschbaum, if anything changes as far as the expected witness lineup, please email Ms. Kappelman and my assistant. This will probably go a long way towards getting to the finish line. I understand, Your Honor. All right, we're in recess. Have a good night, everyone. <laughs>